Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadence, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! I learned a long time ago that there's no sense getting all riled up every time a bunch of idiots give you a hard time. In the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Plus, I have a really large penis. That keeps me happy. Now, what it got here is a scrotum and nothing else. You look goofy. <laughs> It would probably be inappropriate to read Chris's message to feed the ducks. So let's do it. So as you can see, if you just came in, Chris Gore is not here. As I said in the very exclusive part that you probably missed, or maybe not, Chris was the Doug of FNT. He disappeared after the film threat meetup, and here's why. They say never go full retard. But right now, I sound like a retarded Forrest Gump. Last week in Vegas, after the film threat party, I suffered a minor stroke. Doctors say that I'll likely make a full recovery in a few weeks. But right now, I feel like Simple Jack. Well, I think in Chris's case, we'll say Simpler Jack. I mean, come on. And to make matters worse, Alan and I were robbed and lost all of our money and merch from the trip. Yeah, shit like that happens sometimes. Chris, I blame Californians. Vegas, okay, there's a lot of criminals in Vegas, but the criminals had respect back in the day. They had fucking respect. They wouldn't rob a man's car. They'd kill him for snitching. The way things should be. I'll spend the next uh, few weeks getting better as I go through physical therapy. I know it'll be a difficult road to recovery, but I promise you that you will get no hospital selfies or GoFundMe campaigns from me. When bad things happen in life, I like to deal with it on my own, like a man. I've always believed that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. On the bright side, as horrible as my speech is right now, I can perfectly enunciate. You like how I enunciated the word enunciate? Kathleen Kennedy is a cunt, which is more than I can say when Gary tries to say horror armorata. Fuck you, Vegas. Chris Frank Gore. We love you, man. We love you. Let's fade it out.
horrible fade out. But that's the best I can do. That's the best I can do. Welcome to the Nooner. And again, it's a solo Nooner. And I'll say it again. While unfortunate, sometimes solo Nooners are required. They just are. Good for the prostate. Good for the prostate. Why am I? Hang on. Jesus. I hate Windows 11 so much. Check, check, check. Why am I so low now when my volume is blasting? Everything is blasting. Can you guys hear me okay? This is crazy. Oh, that's why. There we go. God damn it. It resets everything. Okay. There we go. Now we're ready. Now you can hear me not doing that over again. All uh, right. Let's see who's here. We got, uh, oh, why did I pick the hardest name to read? Okay. Cathedral ZI, Curtis D of Montana, LK Design, Bob A. Daz, uh, hi, uh, H, what is it? Highlander missing some vowels there, which makes it just really so much easier for me. Haggy, Momus Mouse, Mad Dog, 375, Simple Rhyme, Sonic Spaz, Thripped. What about Thwip? That used to be my license plate. Thwip in California. Uh, Crispy, 1186, uh, Wayne Orama. Misty Mutley, Maj Peaches, Peaches, Liam Bennett, Phil Fedora, Eric Kay's here with his wrench, so are the Mod uh, Ruben Christopher Haynes is here. Say present. Horny Alf, Legion of Memers, let's fucking go. Let's go. Um, there's a lot of entertainment out right now. That a lot of people are watching. And we're going to try to cover as much of it as possible on FNT. It's kind of going to be a mixed bag. Um, and we'll get to it. Jeremy, of course, wants to uh, open the debate of the binge model. I was watching Geeks and Gamers Daily. It's like, all right, here we go. Here we go again. And I just want to point out that the man arguing about the binge model isn't watching any TV right now. <laughs> Uh, I'm up to episode five of Fallout. Um, I have almost caught up on X-Men 97. Going to catch up on Shogun. I'll be ready for Friday Night Tights. There's a lot of stuff out. We got the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare releasing tomorrow. I'm going to go see that right after I'm on Open Bar. Yes, I'll be on Open Bar tomorrow with the Critical Drinker. Lots of stuff out. Is it? It's all kind of mid. <laughs> But I guess that's what we're going to just have to take. I guess that's what we're going to have to take. When um, your big release of the weekend is, no no offense to A24. I think A24 tries a lot of things. Um, is an A24 film, uh, and they're bragging about the $25 million, uh, as we head towards summer. We're in spring, but it's... It's looking really, as I've said before, it's looking pretty dire for Hollywood. Most of the tentpole releases are sequels, and a lot of them are not like two. It's three and four, or a prequel, or a live-action prequel to a live-action remake of an animated movie that came out 30 years ago. And uh, Hollywood is a little scared right now, as they should be, because they're finding out what happens to every entertainment industry that goes digital that goes electronic that that loses um the novelty loses its specialness loses the event loses the event which will be the argument of binge binge tv things stop being an event and it just becomes disposable entertainment and the way western culture is set up right now um there it's not set up for that. Now, in Japan, kind of is. Now, I don't know about now, but I know 
15, maybe even 10 years ago, when somebody was done reading their Shonen Jump or whatever, they would leave it on the fucking train. They wouldn't take it home and keep it. They were like, I'm done. Boop. You know, and then somebody else will read it. Like that's, but it, but it's so, so much part of their culture. Uh, that doesn't happen here. Uh, because if you ride a train and you're reading something, you'll probably get robbed or killed. But um, especially in a blue American city. But I digress. I digress. <laughs> we're also going to discuss. Uh, I'll discuss something about Fallout, but I'm going to kind of wait because I want to wait till I'm done. I want to wait till I'm done. I can tell you that Mrs. Nerdrotic likes it quite a bit. Mrs. Nerdrotic likes it quite a bit. Gave my thoughts on the first episode on The Real BBC. Uh, again, I'm up to episode five. That's supposed to be where it starts to kick. And I'll leave it there. Um, then uh, we got to talk about Doctor Who. I mean, it's dead. We, I understand that. I understand that. But... Um, we do have to point out how they thought this was the way to make uh, Doctor Who a global phenomenon. And this comes from Russell T. Davies, who already made it a global phenomenon. But I guess that wasn't enough. And he wants to make it like Stranger Things? I would, I would argue that you need to make it like Doctor Who! You know, the show, it's been around for 60 years and not some stupid Netflix show. Sorry, that's a, a pretty much the greatest hits from the 80s. Really fucking good first season. Seven, eight out of 10 fourth season and a shit second and third season. That's taken what? How long has it taken to get four seasons out? Seven years, six years, five years, whatever. And then we're not going to get the last season till next year. Binge model destroys that, by the way. Just pointing that out. Uh, then uh, there's a there's a tome of an article. Robert Meyer Burnett went over uh, it completely on his live stream last night. We're just going to go over some little tidbits I noticed called The Life and Death of Hollywood. So we're getting a lot of these articles now. Getting a lot of these articles because they're realizing, hey, like a lot of us said, you know, maybe we're putting quantity over quality. And maybe that putting quantity over quality along with making most of our shit woke garbage wasn't a good business decision. Wasn't a good business decision. X-Ray Girl, you're back there. Could you find, I want to find the quote, Larry Fink from Blackwater complaining about uh, losing money. I want to, for one, I need to fact check it, make sure it's real. Because, uh, you know, because I see something on Twitter, I don't assume it's real. I know I'm naive, but that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we'll start out with, um, I think we'll start out with Dr. Who. We'll start out with Dr. Who. Uh, we'll get into the debate of fallout cause it's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, the, the, the debate on fallout, uh, I think, uh, Jeremy was right. And is this, well, I mean, how do I know if he's right? But I'm guess it sounds good. I'm going to say it sounds good that, um, the, uh, the game, uh, the people who adore the lore from the game, not super happy with it. Normie's pretty happy with it. Um, I know nothing about the game, but like while we were watching it, when we had a question, we'd just go, Nerd Roddick Jr. And he'd come out and then, because he's Nerd Roddick Jr., gave us a 15 explanation, 15 minute explanation on everything and then wanted to elaborate and gave us almost the complete history of the vaults, which was fucking awesome, by the way. And uh, some of that stuff sounds great. By the way, is it Vault 108? The Gary Vault. Where there's a bunch of clones named Gary, and all they can say is Gary. <laughs> I remember people throwing that up at me on Twitter a couple years ago. So, uh, yeah. I was like, well, that's obviously my favorite vault. I think they're murderous, too, which is good. Which is good. Uh, but, yeah, anytime we had a question, we need some blanks filled in. We'd just go, uh, boy. And he'd come out and uh, and fill us in. Okay. Uh, here we go. A new, well, do we want to preface it? No, let's, let's lead up to it, X-Ray Girl. We'll leave the article up. We'll leave the article up. Because there's something that's going around on Twitter. There's one little quote 
Um, not sure if it's in this article. If it's not, we'll find it. It's from uh, Entertainment Weekly's Sound Bites that, well, will tell you pretty much what direct. I mean, we know what direction Doctor Who is going. I know some fucking moron on Twitter. Uh, I don't usually say this, but this guy is a fucking moron. Uh, was thinking I was uh, criticizing kilts uh, because Shooty Gatwa is Scottish. Uh, bruv, I'm more Scottish than Shooty Gatwa. Okay. My family, some of my family comes from Scotland. Okay. Uh, and no, the, the kilt didn't bother me. Uh, it's what he said in the quote below. Uh, but you go on shilling for go, shill for Doctor Who. You you go, girl. You fucking go. If you like it, if you like Doctor Gay, then you do you. I, I'm not going to judge you for that. Um, here we go. Uh, you hear the fifteenth Doctor long before you see him. Hey, girls, let's go. Show me the loving. Um. It's a misty March day in London where Doctor Who star Shuri Gatwa has traded the TARDIS for a giant butt plug. Oh, I'm sorry, for the Entertainment Weekly cover shoot, unveiling a new peak at his time traveling, two hearted hero. In a few moments, he'll zoom past on his way to the, uh, to the, sh Poop shoots oversized clock set. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Just a cackling blur in a TARDIS blue kit before lighting up the soundstage with some press impressive dance moves. Oh, my God. I can't wait for Dr. Ho. Uh, when asked to choose a playlist, he picks Beyonce's. By the way, I just want to point out, Jeremy Griggs' favorite musical artist, Beyonce. Beyonce. Uh, Rene Renaissance album, starting with what else? Alien Superstar. I'm a superstar. But for now, his laugh precedes him, echoing down from the hair and makeup room <laughs> like a warm pulse of solar radiation. <laughs> Could this article be any gayer? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, a few days later, the same laugh rings through Wolf Studios in Wales, Wales, Whale Land, where um, Mahler's accent is from, uh, where Gatwa is back on the Doctor Who set filming an episode for his second season. For his second season. Yes, they, um, they commissioned two seasons uh, with the Disney money. And commissioned seasons is a, a actually, I, I don't think we can use it in this case. Well, it's still BBC. It's a BBC thing because you commission a season from the money you steal from your citizenry. It's not technically a government. It's a government fucking organization. It's a government organization that, that compels the populace to pay for it instead of running ads. Uh, because socialism, whatever. Uh, and you know what, though? They did a good job for a long time. They did. I wonder what changed. I wonder what changed. Was it the 2012 uh, Diversity and Inclusion Initiative? That might have been it. Uh, EW is sworn to secrecy about exactly what we witnessed. Probably a lot of... Yes, Queen. Uh, but we can confirm that it involved space stations, holograms, and the doctor using his brain to thwart an interstellar foe. I'm glad they said brain. Uh, it's a serious moment, and that's that's what the doctor used to do. That's what the doctor used to do prior to the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker. The doctor used to use his brain. And then he stopped using his brain uh, when he became a woman who was a lesbian, who still liked women. You following me? Uh, it's a serious moment. One where Gatwa has to stare into the camera and reach forward. Oh, and act? Yeah, it, <laughs> okay. And, and not act like 
a young gay man, you know, uh, for with his hand. You know, I, I was like willing to give Shooty a chance. I'm like, hey, maybe if he plays it straight. Until he accidentally jostles a piece of camera equipment, the actor immediately suspends any seriousness, striking a cartoonish grimace until the entire crew is giggling along with him. Everybody giggling. And uh, by the way, that money meter keeps going. <clears throat> Sorry. Didn't hit my cough, but I'm still recovering from Vegas. And 18-hour uh, road trip. Uh, the actor immediately, like I read that, it's a laugh that got was Doctor, uh, Doctor Who colleagues know well by now. Showrunner Russell T. Davies calls it the biggest laugh in the galaxy. We know why, why he likes it. And I almost said Mel Gibson. <laughs> I was like, Mel Gibson? Oh, Millie Gibson, <laughs> who plays the Doctor's companion Ruby Sunday, says it's one of her favorite things about Gatwa. The co-stars met... The day she came in for Doctor Who callback and Gibson remembers fidgeting nervously in the waiting room until hearing that loud, booming chuckle from the room. Uh, I could just hear his laugh and I was like, there he is. It's like, yeah, uh, all my nerves melted away. Uh, scroll down a little bit. Actually, no, 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 no. Oh, we want to show this video. We want to show this video. It'll loop back around. <sighs> What's up with these Entertainment Weekly video things they do? They're so fucking cringe. Who can forget the Rings of Power? Uh, Dune. The Dune ones were fucking terrible. The Dune 2 ones. Oh, my God. He's cocking in. <laughs> Oh, okay, scroll down. To be fair, <clears throat> Doctor Who is dead. Uh, Gawa has a lot of to laugh about. Can we fucking, what is this, three paragraphs about his fucking laugh? What about Doctor Who? Oh, yeah, you're not making it. After uh, stealing scenes in sex education and Barbie, do you remember? He was in Barbie. Playing a Ken, playing gay Ken. Uh, the 31-year-old actor is launching the next act, playing the titular character, titular Time Lord, in the BBC's legendary sci-fi series, Doctor Who, after popping up last year's 60th anniversary special, The Giggle, and a solo Christmas episode, uh, which didn't do well. Did they ever report the ratings for that? As are you out there? Did they ever report the ratings for that? I can't remember. I don't really care that much. But uh, He's now taking full control of the TARDIS. sip of coffee for the working man <clears throat> uh and it comes out may 10th and it will launch worldwide the funny part this is the fun this is the part that makes me laugh because as a damn near lifelong doctor who fan i've never wanted any american influence on it whatsoever i don't want an american caterer i don't want a, an american janitor in the building it is a british show that i want to remain British, but now it has the American influence. And one moment, it will release in America first, which would be funny if it was good. But I don't, maybe it's not that funny because we get it first, because we're getting this version first. So it releases at midnight on D plus first, and then it airs in the UK. <laughs> like, there would have been a time when Doctor Who had an actual fandom that that would be an absolute revolt. That would be, a f fuck no. But they would say it, you know, in a very British way, which would be smarter, but cut deeper somehow. Um, but now everybody's like, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, it will air simultaneously around the globe. The move comes with a bigger budget, a bigger platform, Bigger scrutiny and a bigger problem. You know what that bigger problem is? I'm adding now. No one cares. The problem that is coming for all the franchises is it's kind of here. The, the problem that's here for most of the franchises that 
all of us were warning about for years and years. People are going to get upset. They're going to speak their minds. They're going to hope things change. And when they realize things don't, they're going to stop caring. There's a lot of shit out there to do. A lot of other stuff out there to do. And, uh, you know, there was a time where you could have changed directions and rallied. Um, there's a couple examples of this. Just a couple. Uh, what prevents that from happening? Ego. DEI. Ego. DEI. Uh, if you and whatever it's called now, it will be relabeled. Whatever it's called now, it's there. The check boxes are there, and we discussed that in the Fallout review. It's like I can see the check boxes in this show. They're just obvious, and they're required now. So, <clears throat> the human part in me wants to feel for some of the creators. We're like, God dang it! I just wanted to make a show, and now we got to do all this effing stuff and we could have made this diverse anyway but now we have to like run it by algorithm run it by checklist you can't make art like that you just can't plus it supports a marxist bullshit theory there's that which automatically now is going to alienate a lot of your viewers automatically and you know what whether it's super guilty of it or not hollywood has earned this uh well th they've earned the fact that we we will not give them the benefit of the doubt of anything this scrutiny they have earned this scrutiny so to get on the audience about well you know and and i've mentioned it too like oh you're seeing woke ghosts out there and you know sometimes sure sure absolutely um but they've earned it but they've earned it. So one of the canaries in the coal mine, you know, after not as big, but after uh, the last Jedi was Dr. Who, when they just turned it and turned him into a girl. And this is something Moffat had warned about years prior. He even said in, in an interview, I put that clip in multiple videos where he goes, ah, if he, if they make the doctor a female, it's them pushing the panic button. And they pushed the panic button after Capaldi, which was, which sucks because Capaldi uh, was done dirty, was done absolutely dirty. He could have been the best doctor by far, by far. But uh, Moffat's writing got so abysmal towards the end. And uh, it was Dave Cullen who made a great video on this, you know, Describing how Doctor Who had already gone woke even before Jody got there. They just dialed it to 11 with season 11. See what I did there? Uh, the move comes with a bigger budget, bigger scrutiny, blah, blah, blah. Gatwa admits that there was a uh, super anxious in the lead. He was super anxious in the lead up to the anniversary special. I almost didn't even leave my house and his shoulders didn't relax until the Christmas episode aired. Even now, he can feel his muscles tightening as the new season's air date approaches. I was really cautious about getting it right throughout the filming. The Rwandan Scottish actor <clears throat> explains uh, it's 60 years uh, worth of legacy and 60 years worth of the show that uh, people that loved and watched their families it lives in people's hearts, so I really wanted to protect that. That's good. <clears throat> uh, no one has a problem with a kilt, but do you think this is a kilt in traditional Scottish sense? Uh, you know the answer to that. Fortunately for Gatwa, fans and his colleagues alike seem to have already fallen for his doctor. Really? <laughs> um, tell me something. Entertainment Weekly doing a fluff piece for Doctor Who. Um, did Doctor Who chart in America? Did it chart in America? No. No. We had the ratings... And they, when David Tennant came back, they were low, extremely low. Now, they went and found a bunch of ratings in the couch uh, through the seven-day 
and there were lots of fuckery going on with the ratings with the iPlayer. By the way, iPlayer judges a rating. If you watch it for one minute, that's a, that's a view. That's a view. But uh, yeah, you know what? <clears throat> we'll we'll see. We'll see. We will see. Doctor passes uh, the doctor pa uh, from Doc David Tennant. They had the by generation, uh, which Peter Davison called out. So I, I don't know why they did that. <laughs> the fifth doctor. Ah, uh, God, I love him. You know he's just fucking biting his lip. He's all because he's the one. He got a bunch of shit when uh, Jody came out, and he's all wait. You just uh, a lot of a lot of boys just lost a, a good male role model. Because the doctor is a good male role model. He teaches you how to think in a situation. A lot of good lessons to be learned from the old doctor. They brought back Catherine Tate. We all know this. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. I don't want to read this whole thing. Oh, wait, wait. Go to the picture. <laughs> That'll get them subscribing to Disney Plus. That'll bring them in. Doctor Who is saved. Doctor Who is saved. Oh, my God. I want to find out if it's in this article. I'll just do a quick search. Yes. Um, X-Ray Girl. Well, hang on. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Oh my God, this is long. Oh wait, scroll down to the next picture. Oh wait, no. God, there's, Jesus, this thing is long. God, <laughs> what the hell, dude? Okay, yeah, we're not gonna read this whole thing. This thing's like a book long. Um, And they talk more about laughing. This, look at how long this fucking article is. We can just look at the pictures because that, that'll sell you. Uh, please search the word twerk. There we go. That's good. Also, got was wish another dance scene. The 15th Doctor charmed Ruby and fans by hitting the dance floor in the Christmas special. And after performing I'm Just Ken at the Oscars with Barbie co-star Ryan Gosling, he says he's always ready to put on the choreo his choreographer experience to use on who. Uh, I need a big dance number, he says. That's what I'm going to put out into the universe. I need the doctor to have a big, fierce dance routine that, like, destroys a monster with twerking or maybe some death drops, and that's what drops the monster. Daddy, chill. I'll eat your ass. What the hell is even that? Uh, hopefully there'll be plenty of time for Daleks and dancing. Got was confirmed to star in at least two seasons. Uh, with the second shooting now. Uh, they also got an Andor actress. Uh, one day, people will be sitting there uh, discussing its 100th anniversary, its 150th and 200th. No, 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 no. Oh, you could take the article down. Twerking. Twerking. Okay. Well. And that it comes out in May comes out in May. I really don't want to review it. I really don't. We're going to pull we're going to put a poll up cuz we did this for Obi-Wan. Right? And I lost badly. So we're going to put a poll up and see if I even cover this. But we'll see. We will see. Uh Working, dude. Working. 
Um, where are you, X-ray girl? There you are. No, the, I'm talking about, I'm looking for your, your messages. Okay. Get to a few super chats before we go on to uh, talking about the binge model. Uh, Dagon Dogs on the Streamlabs side for $40 says, Stream lurker who just wanted to contribute after hearing about Chris Gore. My spouse had a stroke in October. Was, uh, what's that? Is it incubated as a result or in? Intubated. Into what's intubated? It's when you, they put a tube down your throat so that you can keep an oh, okay. uh, open line to the air. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. She's an actual x ray girl. She emits x-rays, and she's also an x-ray technician. Uh, thank you, x-ray girl, for educating the dumbass who's been kicked out of three high schools. Uh, but has nearly made a full recovery since. That's awesome. So it's uh, if he's writing and talking, that's great news. Hail to you and the fellowship. Yeah, like his his, his sleech. His, oh, dude, I just had a stroke. I'm not going to stop making those jokes. His speech was slurring at the uh, at uh, CinemaCon, and it was uh, very concerning. Very concerning. So uh, hats off to Alan who rushed him to the ER. And uh, I'm probably going to go out there and visit him. It'll bug him. But uh, yeah, it's got to be frustrating for Chris. I know that. Because Chris likes to talk. I don't know if you've noticed or not. But Chris likes to talk. So if he's writing and talking, that's good. Hail to you in the fellowship. Thank you. Thank you, Dagan Dogs. Uh, B Chain 315 for $50. Because when you are uh, young, when we are young, wandering the face of the earth, wandering, uh, wondering what our dreams might be worth, learning that we're only immortal for a limited time. Neil Pert, Dreamline. Thoughts and prayers, Chris. Hope you're listening. Get well soon, brother. Hell yeah. Uh, a little something to help Chris from Zion42 for $25. He is a vital part of our fellowship, and we are all pulling for him to get well soon. Chris, you are a good man, but you can't stop us from helping a fellow man in need. Get well soon. He's going to start thinking this is getting real gay. I'm just saying. Somebody better call him a game warden. Uh, Poway, P-O-W for $20. Thank you for the donation. Are you in Poway, California? where Blink-182 is from, Poway, California. It's also close to where I'm from. So. I worked on, when is, what is his name now? I'm not a Blink-182 fan, okay? I'm just not. Uh, but uh, the guy who sings like this, uh, we're, uh, we're worked on his car. I worked on his car. Was it Adam's song? The, the suicide one? Yeah, he had the demo in his... Uh, in a CD player, and we listened to it. <laughs> but, yeah, I worked on his car back in the day. Uh, Frosty Film Watcher for $20. The message, the message never changes. Here's hoping season two of Fallout is good. I love New Vegas. Unrelated, what Spider-Man runs do you recommend for a starting collector? Hail to the Fellowship, the beginning. I will say that always. The beginning. Just get him in reprints. Um... That's where I'd start. There is, I, I keep forgetting because it's been a while since I saw comics. They, they used to have Marvel Essentials, right? Which were, we called them coloring books. And there's a, just a bunch of comics, really cheap, that you can read, but it's black and white. Uh, they have like epic collections now that are colorized. Um, I hate trade paperbacks. I hate reprints. But if you just want to read good stories, find some essentials in a used bookstore or at a comic shop from the beginning. That's where you start with Spider-Man. Uh, Vegas Matt from $25. Hi, can we have uh, a fellowship meetup in San Antonio, Texas this fall for SpaceCon? We are, Vegas Matt. We absolutely are. I don't know if I brought that up, but yes, uh, Gina is going to be at SpaceCon. So we are doing our very first hometown meetup uh, in late October. The cast from Star Trek TNG, Star Trek Voyager, uh, Stargate SG-1, and Gina Carano 2. Hail to the Fellowship. Hail to the 199. Hail. Mm. 
Which pack? I'm looking at. I'm sorry, I was reading an email. I don't know. I don't know. The only things I got in the mail are um, I got this. Yeah. But there's other stuff I haven't opened yet. Sorry, I was responding to a thing I didn't even read. All right, we're going to go to, uh, let's throw up the Forbes article. Not going to really, Forbes liked the show, okay? Um, where what? I'll, I watched two-thirds of the first episode yesterday, and I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. <clears throat> uh, Mahler did. Mahler did, but that was the first two thirds. So um, after the show, uh, all on our own, we're like, well, I already said I'm going to power through today. And I didn't. I got it. I got three more episodes to go. But as and Mahler did, they powered through. Fallout is terrific, but Amazon made a huge mistake. Uh, this is from Eric Kane. Uh, I'm sure he would say the same about me. Don't agree with everything Eric says. He has some pretty good takes on The Witcher. Uh, I don't know about this, though. I don't know about this. I'm happily making my way through Amazon's Fallout series, though I haven't had time to binge the whole thing yet. It's wonderful. I couldn't be more delighted with the show, which is a faithful adaptation to Bethesda's popular series of post-apocalyptic RPGs. Now, my son would come out, because he's told me this, and go, well, actually, Bethesda didn't start it. But whatever. Uh, I'm glad that the creators of the show chose to tell a new series set in the Fallout universe rather than a straight-up adaptation of one of the games. Sometimes that works. HBO's The Last of Us did it, though. Damn it. Uh, I got as far as the episode that was gay. It only existed to be gay. All it did do was be gay. And then... They died. Never to return. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't. While it's based on the books, Netflix Witcher show comes to mind. They might uh, have been better off following the lead of video game developer CD Projekt Red, which chose to tell a new Witcher story in the video game ad uh, adaptation rather than adapt the books. Uh, one of the best things about Fallout, uh, the TV show, is that it's very accessible wherever you are uh, if you've not played the games. I feel like, I will say this, I feel like I, I know enough about the world. and uh, But I do have a, a teenager that can fill in the blanks who's played the game. So I don't know. I don't know. You guys tell me. Uh, one of the... Uh, Yes, fans of the games will notice a lot of fun stuff from the source material, but even if you're a total newcomer, you can watch and follow along with any with uh, without any issues. I didn't say that. Oh, go, 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 go. I wasn't finished reading that. Similar to how Netflix's Arcane is great, whether you've not played League of Legends. I got to watch Arcane. I got to watch Arcane. I guess we didn't need to read that. You're probably right, actually, Bill. Uh, the story resolves around three main characters 200 years after the nuclear war basically destroyed everything, driving some survivors into underground bunkers called vaults. Uh, Ella Purnell plays Lucy McLean, a uh, vault dweller who, through unfortunate circumstances, leaves the relatively uh, relative safety of Vault 33 and travels to the surface on a, uh, on a life or death mission. Uh, she's joined by Maximus, worst character in the show. Oh, do we have to pay? Is there more? Do we have to pay? Oh, no. Okay, good. Uh, scroll down. I want to just get to this. Uh, there's the ghoul. There's Maximus. Maximus is the worst character in the show. That has not changed. I won't spoil anything more in the review. When I've finished the entire series, I'll post a spoiler follow-up. I just want to urge everyone sitting on the fence to give this series a shot. And absolutely, give it a shot. Like, even Civil War, you know. I wouldn't say, like, don't go see it. If you need a good nap, you go see Civil War. Uh, I'll, post, uh, I'll post a spoiler follow-up. For now, I just wanted to urge everyone sitting on the fence, this series, give it a shot. It's great, it's great fun with plenty of humor, action, and mystery. 
and its creators clearly put a lot of effort into making it true to the game universe while also being uh, there for storytelling. Uh, Amazon's blunder. Let's go down there. Uh, the one problem with the show is that it will soon fade from public conversation entirely thanks to Amazon dumping all eight episodes onto Prime at once. I know many people like the binge watch their TV these days, but it's genuinely a huge disservice to the show, its creators and cast, and to fans to release everything all at once. Amazon often drops a couple of episodes at once and then airs the rest weekly. And we're going to hear Eric's side of the story first, and I'll definitely give you mine. Uh, by the way, if you are a longtime subscriber to this channel, I've been talking about this shit for pretty, pretty much day. No, it might have even been mentioned. No. And my first five podcasts, it was mentioned. I, I think the binge model from a business standpoint is retarded. Absolutely retarded. Okay. Uh, shows like The Boys and The Rings of Power have followed this weekly model. Help The Boys. The second show helped a lot of YouTubers. Uh, and when they, those shows air, they're talked about for weeks. I don't know about Rings of Power season two. I, I Honestly, I'm looking forward to it, but it's not going to be like season one. It's going to be more like Wheel of Time season two, where everybody just fucked off. Um, the Netflix model almost always means that the show gets buzz, bu a bunch of buzz for a week or two, then disappears completely. No water cooler talk or Monday morning like we had with Game of Thrones and so many other shows of the past. Remember the live action Avatar? That dropped in February and then almost completely disappeared. Meanwhile, The Last of Us on HBO generated weeks of buzz and excitement. So did House of the Dragon, by the way. So did House of the Dragon. Uh, on a more personal note, I enjoy weekly uh, releases because I like writing weekly recaps, blah, blah, blah. And I like doing uh, the weekly live streams, possibly even weekly videos still. Not really doing that much anymore, but uh, definitely weekly uh, streams. Uh, I do enjoy doing that, and we will be doing that for House of the Dragon. I'll have Mahler, I'll have Ryan, others, and we'll be doing a, uh, right after the show, about a 90-minute stream, maybe two hours, 90-minute stream, probably 90 minutes, because that's what I used to do back in the day, of uh, our thoughts on the show. What I didn't do with House of the Dragon, because I guess freaking busy with rings of power is like i did weekly videos and i had to stop because i just ran out of time i wish i finished though or at least done a follow-up so uh this year you'll at least get a follow-up review of the entire season probably two i'll probably do one halfway through and then the final one when it's done uh i like writing weekly recaps when everything drops at once everyone watches it at scroll up a little bit please are you gone? Wait, maybe she's gone. Oh, she's gone. Now her internet's down. It's all right, folks. I've got the article. I can get it. Where was I? Oh, now she's back. What the hell's going on? It's Canadian healthcare and internet. It's all on the same bill. Where was I? On a more personal, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, when everything drops at once, everyone watches at their own pace and it becomes much harder to write individual posts for each episode. We still, uh, we're still talking about Shogun next week when the series finale airs. Uh, but Fallout will be yesterday's news. And so is The Gentleman. We'd still be talking about, uh, will we still be talking about The Gentleman? Is it eight episodes? Maybe. I think so. Yeah, we'd still be talking about The Gentleman, too. Um, which is really being, it, it's iffy on a season two, although it, it according to Netflix, did extremely well. Uh, people love it. I think it's the best show I've seen since One Piece. Totally out of the conversation now totally out of the conversation, which will hurt it getting a second season with, you know, not A-list actors, but definitely actors who do a lot of movies and getting Guy Ritchie back. Um, they're like, we don't know. Although the show ended, 
felt like. Not a cliffhanger, but setting up a season two. But apparently their intention was just, ah, we're going to do one. So we'll see. Kind of sucks to hear, but uh, it's it's a good story to watch no matter what. You're not going to be left hanging at all. Like, it has a very closed ending. So, uh, no, and, and ending very much like the movie, the gentleman, if you like the movie. Uh, but Shogun, which is fantastic. Like, it went from, like, I'm really liking this, to fantastic. A lot of reading. Do not watch the dub. It's retarded. Uh, but it's it's mostly in Japanese. It's fantastic. Uh, but Fallout will be yesterday's news instead of six or seven weeks of watching. That's, you know what? I'd love to make a Fallout video. I would. I'll, we'll talk about it on live streams, but I'm not going to. Instead of six or uh, seven weeks of watching, and because, sorry, before I get started, I like to make videos. Uh, I like to watch the entire series. I like to watch the entire series. Um, and uh, by the time I'm done, there's other stuff going on. Uh, instead of six or seven weeks of watching and coming up with uh, fan theories like we did for Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy's HBO show Westworld, well, there's only one fact about Westworld. It's one season. It's one season. By the way, same people who are working on uh, Fallout, uh, first episode, Oh, no, three episodes will be directed by Jonathan Nolan. Uh, thankfully, Lisa Joy is not writing any of this. She's just an executive producer. She's a horrible writer. She's the one who fucked up Westworld three ways to Sunday. Um, and r remember when the man in black in season two killed his daughter on Father's Day? It was like our Father's Day. And that was after Game of Thrones had Tyrion Lannister kill his father on Father's Day. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, by the way, Westworld unceremoniously canceled on a cliffhanger season and then ripped off the fucking platform for a while. I think it might be back, but it was ripped up. Now, you can watch it other places, but uh, yeah. Uh, we'll all just move on with our lives. And that's a real shame because Fallout is genuinely great. All right. You could take the article down here. So the binging, the bingeing, which I'm sure will continue on FNT. Uh, well, we don't know. Um, most of that argument, which is hilarious, by the way. It's a fucking hilarious argument because Jeremy is arguing from a com completely different perspective from my argument. So he's arguing from, I like to watch. What do I prefer to watch? That's not what that's not what I I'm talking about. That's not what I propose. I am proposing it from the business standpoint and not even as a fuck. To, like, yes, for personal reasons, as a YouTuber, I'd love to watch it. But like if I'm an executive at a studio that I'm dumping two hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars into a series, I want it talked about more than a week and a half. Now, rightly so. If something's good, it's good. That that's ultimately it's got to be good. It's got to be good or it won't be successful. Well, okay, there's Avatar. But um, it's got to be good and it won't be successful. People have to like it. And here's the problem. It would be more successful if they released it weekly because guess what? You can binge it when it's done, which gives you another boost at the end of the series. Well, people go, well, Netflix is making $2 billion off of all of their old stuff. One Piece which I loved. It was the best show of last year, the best show I have seen in years. That and House of the Dragon were the best show I've seen in years. Like, actual quality writing, quality characterization, people I actually like and were rooting for with a pretty satisfying ending. That's what I like in a show. Um, it was out of the conversation like that, comparatively. It was such a phenomenon for like three, four weeks. It was eight episodes. So it could have been a phenomenon for minimum two months and then got the boost from the streaming, making it three months. People talking about it weekly, it building up momentum. And by the people, by the time the people watch that finale, they get probably record writings. Okay. How many long running, prolific series? Do, does Netflix have original content? 
original content. Keep in mind, while One Piece was doing very well, you know what was kicking its ass? Suits on Netflix. That's why Netflix is making record profits because it's taking just above mid shows, mid shows from the USA Network from a decade ago, and millions of people are watching them, bringing in subscriptions. And it's not like nobody had a chance. It's not like that wasn't available on physical media. It was rerun on USA. It's 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 kind of hard to explain, but people just want their comfort television, and that's what it was during a strike. A mid and and now like everybody's gonna be buying up old USO uh, USA shows. Burn Notice, by the way, that's the fucking best of all of them. Watch Burn Notice. It's a shit. Um, yeah, like normie shows, like total normie guys. And I know you're out there in the chat. No offense, but guys who wear like their khakis or whatever, fucking <laughs> their dockers. That's what they like, and that's all good. It's all good. Beat the shit out of One Piece which was a, considered a major success. By the way, they just started filming. They just started filming right now. So if they're just starting to film right now, eh, next year, summer, late summer, next year. So that's two years. So that's your other problem with binging. And that's why it's not sustainable. It's just not. Uh, and that's why every other streaming service is crashing and burning. Yes, Netflix is doing great. They were the first there. They have the best UI. Uh, they went through a little, some hard times. They were losing subscribers just two years ago during this big streaming rush, but they won. They won because they invested heavily into Eastern entertainment and they bought some mid series that people watched the shit out of. Tiger King doesn't hurt. That didn't cost them anything. But it's talked about for a little while and eh. There's no follow-up to Tiger King unless they're doing the prison stories, which would be probably kind of funny. Um, it's taken years to finish Stranger Things. So if if Netflix Netflix can sustain plopping, you know, I, the one thing Netflix wins on is variety. It has variety. They they at the same time frame they can put out shit like Damsel, but then put out something good like The Gentleman, and that's great. But then you're done. Then you're done. Uh, I tried uh, Parasite the Grey last night. Uh, it's not terrible. I, I, I love uh, so, um, uh, Kimmy Anime sent me uh, as a housewarming gift Parasite, uh, the Maxim. And I fucking loved it. It was great. Dude, the animation on it is unbelievable. Uh, it's great. So this is in that, it's, uh, in that world with different characters. And um, instead of... Uh, Talking to uh, a hand, it's a dual personality. Uh, dude, it's lightning fast. Like, they do not screw around. They set up the premise and have parasites attacking people within the first minute. Like, it is, yeah, it is paced like a, like everybody's on meth. But uh, it was okay. It was okay. It was fine. But, like, it's there to try. Um, and they're going to do a lot more of that. They should still release shit weekly. You could still, like, older stuff, binge it all you want. When it's done, you could, um, I heard Jeremy's argument. Uh, he's, he's, he sounds like uh, fucking the Norma Ray of the binge argument. And he doesn't even know who fucking Norma Ray is. But he's like, power to the people. People should have choices. You'll have a choice. You can binge it when it's done. But if you like your show and you want your show to be around for a long time and you want it to get the best creatives and it needs to be released weekly, it needs to be released at the same fucking time in the United States, and they can't take two fucking years in between shows. They just can't do it. If, because every streaming service wants Game of Thrones. They want their seminal TV show. Game of Thrones was getting beat by The Walking Dead in ratings for the longest time. And there was Talking Dead afterwards, which I think helped spawn a lot of the YouTube conversation about television. If uh, there was Talking Dead, there was also Clyde. I didn't watch any of that shit, but I did watch Talking Dead. Um, inspired me to, to do uh, weekly recaps of like obscure TV shows just for fun. I did Ash vs. Evil Dead and American Gods and Westworld and a Counterpart, which fuck. 
counterpart, man. Such a great concept that got canceled too soon. J.K. Simmons was fucking great in it. Plays two characters. If you haven't seen Counterpart, like, especially the first season, uh, it's around. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Fantastic show. Concept, Cold War drama, except it's like you're at the Berlin Wall and you're working in between the Berlin Wall, except it's not the Berlin Wall. It's a, uh, through a science experiment, uh, a failed, not a failed science, a science experiment that copied reality, basically. Made a carbon copy of our reality. And there's one passage to get way through. And there is a carbon copy of every one of us out there. But as time went on, and they were exactly the same. They were personality-wise exactly the same. But as time went on, it started diverging. And they kind of went to war with each other. But it was a cold war. So you have to watch it. It's really fucking cool. I digress. But, yeah, show, uh, talk to me, uh, aside from rare exceptions, and I mean rare, name a fucking good season two of a Netflix show. I think you could probably name four. Maybe five. Maybe. But most of them fucking suck. They Because they come out, for one, Netflix isn't familiar with making TV. They buy most of it. They don't actually produce their own shit. They buy most of it. Um, and they were just the big boys. But HBO is better at making it. Like, by far. Absolutely better at making it. And uh, wait until you see the response to House of the if, if they maintain the quality of season one, House of the Dragon season two will be the biggest show this year. It's going to be. And, and that's phenomenal. That's crazy because Game of Thrones ended like shit. Season eight was fucking dog shit. And the fact that <clears throat> it won me back for a prequel and it was done I mean, I I think ultimately, if they stick with this and they're st they're doing three, they're doing four seasons, uh, it will be better than the original Game of Thrones series, as far as quality and storytelling. Because you got an ending, by the way, there is an actual ending to this story. Now HBO, uh, and to tell you how successful this is, now there's two spinoffs in production. We got uh, Aegon's Conquest, which yes, I want to see absolutely, and then um. We got the Hedge Knight, Duncan Egg. They casted, they they cast him. Looks good. Little bit of a problem with this though. Tiny, tiny problem. It's another unfinished George R. R. Martin book series. That's right. She Wolves of Winterfell has not come out yet. And then I think there's another one that tells you what happens at Summer Hall. Uh, you don't want to know that. Uh, so yeah, it's another unfinished book series. But uh, House of Dragon going to be pretty big. Uh, Netflix will still continue doing the binge model because I think they that's part of their brand um, until they it won't be sustainable. <clears throat> They're making record profits now because they won the streaming war. But that'll change. That'll change. And dumping, well, it, they've cut their production in half like everybody else. And they've redirected a billions of their dollars to the East. So production has been halved in Hollywood. We already know that. Uh, it's really difficult to get a job. Hollywood is in a depression. They're very sad. And one of the reasons that contributed this is the binge model. Disposable entertainment is not sustainable. Outside of Netflix, nobody made money on streaming. Nobody. And that's kind of crazy if you think about it. Considering how long Disney is having to, uh, it, it's a shell game with them. Okay. They're having to merge Disney Plus into Hulu and they merge their colors and all that shit. And the fucking brand is lame. Um, be, and they've been working on Disney Plus for for all they, since 2013 that I know of, and it was probably prior to that. But I know they were working on Disney Plus, their streaming service, in 2013. So yeah, the binge model is stupid. It's dumb. It doesn't mean I don't binge stuff. It doesn't mean I don't want to binge stuff. Absolutely, when it's done. But if you want your if you like a show and you want it to be successful, if you want a season two of the gentleman gentleman, it should have been weekly. Uh, One Piece, if it was weekly, would be twice as big as it is now. And as I mentioned earlier, that time between 
that two years in between series won't feel like two years if you spent two months watching it. If you spend a weekend watching it, you feel every day of that two years, and most of the time you're like, eh, eh, I don't care. House of the Dragon, a little under two years, but the reason they took the last two episodes, it was 10 episodes, now it's eight, is because they're going to start turning it around. Because they know, they're like, we got to do this. We got to get this done in a certain amount of time. We can't take eight years to put out four seasons of television. That'll work with some things. Most things, it doesn't. 99% of the things out there, it doesn't. And I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they just drastically lowered the budgets and started going back to procedurals. Because obviously people still like those quite a bit. And they still have them out there, but like streaming services are going to have to figure it out. Problem with procedurals is they are made for weekly. They are. They're episodic. But then you can binge them later. And people are just going to go, I like, I, I understand that you like binge. And uh, it's good. It's fine. Binge the hell out of something. Go binge the hell out of Always Sunny. That's a good binge day, week, month, if you want to. Go binge Always Sunny. Go binge the Twilight Zone. But you're not going to get a water cooler. Like, like, uh, like Forbes said, you're not going to get a water cooler show from the binge. You're just not. And it's not all about YouTubers. It's about people about people going out and talking about it watching it at the same time with the shared experience and as ryan mentioned on daily yeah it's like uh, i'm five episodes in on fallout Mahler and as are have finished it i can't really talk to him about it till i'm done uh there's no restraint in society right it's like getting all your halloween candy which i was guilty of and just eating it all at once Sure, it's fun till the next day. There's no restraint. And what that does is it, uh, like I said earlier, the event is gone. The novelty is gone. The specialness of a TV show is gone, and it just becomes junk food all the time. Now, junk food in moderation, fine. Totally fine. But... uh it's not how you create art or episodic television. So you're trying to mold a, a major feature film into a TV series. You come up with the Prestige series, which is really good, and it worked when it was 10 or 15 episodes. BBC's been doing that forever. Um, but it worked for HBO. You know, it's been 20 years since Sex of the City and Sopranos and all that, uh, and Carnival. And um, I love that show, Carnival, by the way. <clears throat> Uh, Rome, but weekly is the way. Weekly is the way. Binge it later. Binge it later. How you doing, X-ray girl? So briefly, um, and and again, it's uh, aside from DEI and uh, being a bunch of old garbage. Uh, that's what's contributed to uh, the death of Hollywood. They went all in. Uh, and it didn't make any money. So now they're in now they're in shrinkage. If you want to pull up the life and death of Hollywood, we are not going to read this whole thing. Again, I would refer you to the Robert Meyer Burnett stream from last night if you want to see the whole thing. It's the history of Hollywood. Like they they go back to the 20s. They go back to the 20s. What I wanted to go over here is all right uh control f government x-ray girl one of the suggestions so i'll i'll try to sum this up give you the cliff notes version uh it goes over the history of the hollywood of hollywood uh ups and downs commies uh that were actually there um and uh something they addressed in fallout by the way uh, and, um, you know, going from silent to sound to VHS, uh, technology getting cheaper in the seventies, this breakup of the studios, government getting involved and, uh, 
and basically, uh, you know, breaking up the studios constantly. There's lots of regulation in Hollywood, tons of regulation to help protect the unions. The union, the unions came in because, I mean, back in the twenties, uh, how did the article mentions that they were making the equivalent of twenty five hundred bucks a week, which is pretty fucking good. They're making the equivalent of two hundred thousand dollars a year. A writer, a Hollywood writer. And then um, when the depression hit, all the studios went, all your pay's cut in half. So that's what brought on the unions. Okay. I mean, that's gonna bring on a union if you do that. If you cut your fucking employees' pay in half, it's gonna bring on a union, and that's a whole set of problems, and you end up paying that like just pay your employees good. That's all. You know, fair and good. But don't be fucking screech. I hated that. I hated that. Are your employees worth it? Is your time worth it? Because, like, especially if you're a small business owner, the reason you have employees is because you want to see your family. You want to go do stuff uh, after you've busted your ass being there by yourself every day. It's like, all right, you know, I want to I go do stuff. Is it worth it? And, yes, my time is worth it. And if they're good, they're worth it. But fuck unions. So the unions came in. And it's just a const, constant back and forth between, um, I'm forgetting the term now, antitrust, and that's it, antitrust and unions and government regulation, blah, blah, blah. But it all worked out because a lot of fucking money was being made, right? So there was a lot of money being made. And then it uh, kind of really peaked um, in with the DVD market, merchandising, uh, 80s, 90s. Uh, there was a huge boom in film. Independent film was hot, especially in the 90s. Uh, DVDs were coming along. Blu-rays selling like freaking crazy. So they were for the first time ever, they're like making tons of money on the back end. And in some cases, more money than in the theaters. In a lot of cases, actually. Matrix, uh, Austin Powers, just two examples of many of uh, the first Matrix of films that made tons of money on DVD sales. Like that's what got them their sequels. Uh, that's what got them their sequels. So then they decided to go to streaming and they didn't like nobody bothered. Nobody fucking bothered to go. I wonder how other industries dealt with this. Let's look over at music still around. People go to the Coachella and they take their E and listen to Grimes or now, now a Blink-182 is classic rock, and for us old dogs, that just makes us laugh when we see all the fucking 30- and 40-year-olds going, oh, it's like, aha, I went through that. Um, <clears throat> Tom DeLonge, that's his name, Tom DeLonge. See, Tom DeLonge comes out with a little boiler, you know? It's all good. We all, it all happens to the best of us, brother. Um, whatever, they go to the Coachella. Uh, but you know what isn't? It, music isn't important anymore if it was taylor swift wouldn't like dominate the fucking top 10 uh you might like her poppy music and be a swifty or whatever but as art it's it doesn't exist music used to be one of one of the if not the highest form of art they used to be doing the most interesting things we get concept albums bands fucking selling out stadiums by themselves that don't require a festival and now the band's making the most money. Fucking ancient metal bands on tour. <laughs> Getting residencies in Vegas. And that, you want to talk about old. I saw the Scorpions. Woo! But they were good. But they were good. Um, that's what's going to happen to movies. So the album is not a special. Uh, sure. Yes, I hear you in the chat. There's vinyl. And for the uber nerds like me, we buy vinyl. Hell yeah. Does it really sound better? I don't know. I don't care. The packaging is better. The, the, nothing beats the packaging of a vinyl record album. Nothing. That is the best packaging uh, out there. There here come the package jokes. Here they come. But you know what I'm saying. It's all about presentation, that's what my wife says. So there's still people buying vinyl, but it doesn't. it's nowhere near what, what it used to be. Uh, the sales are nowhere near what they used to be. They're far more ambiguous. You saw old Snoop Dogg complaining about being screwed by streaming services. So, yeah. So once it all becomes like one, once you get this one dominant streaming service, they start making all the money and then it becomes practically a monopoly. That's what's going to be happening to Netflix very soon. Very soon. The other ones will struggle 
to to eek uh, crumbs from Netflix, and that's going to be very bad overall. But um, that's basically where we're ending is anytime something goes digital, it becomes disposable, less important, and therefore you start losing your talent to something else because there's a finite number of talent out there. And if they're not making the most money in Hollywood, why would they put up with all that shit? There's so many that do, but why? When you can go out on your own now and do something completely different. By the way, YouTube crushing everybody, even Netflix. And it's you guys. It's you guys. We're going to just entertain each other. I've said that. So here's their big solution. Here's their big solution. Oh, by the way, DEI and woke destroyed the fucking meritocracy. That's something this article won't bring up. Nobody, nobody will fucking bring it up in, in the in the major uh, corporate media ever. They'll bring it up by saying, well, white supremacists will say DEI is bad, but it's not because. And we'll go to a, our expert, uh, Karl Marx, who will explain, you know, it's like, fuck off, you know, I, They'll never bring it up, but it it's it was the death blow. It was the death blow. There were a lot of problems. There were a lot of problems, but it certainly doesn't help alienating half your audience. You need that money. You needed that audience. And uh, now they're like, we're not sorry bigots, but we're going to make our stuff less woke. We'll try to sneak some stuff in, but we still think you're bigots. It's like, fuck off. Uh, here's one of their... Uh, solutions. Uh, profit will, of course, find a way. There will always be shit to watch, but without radical intervention, whether by the government. This isn't uh, the communist website we were re reading earlier. This is like Harper, Harper's. What is it? Oh, well, maybe it is. Who knows? Uh, it, hang on. Harper's Magazine. I'll read that again. This is not the first time I've heard this. Profit will, uh, of course, find a way. There will always be shit to watch. But without radical intervention, whether by the government or the workers, the industry will become unrecognizable. And the writing trade, the kind where one actually earns a living, will be obliterated. Um, I'm going to say oh, male or female. Listen, sweetheart. It's already been obliterated. Because your union writers suck. I repeat, your union writers, for the most part, suck. They don't deserve to be writing there. If you write shit, that shit that people think is shit, and they don't watch your shit, then you're not a writer. Go find something else to do. They suck. Uh, and uh, the writers were complaining that they haven't gotten a lot of work. Probably because you suck. Now, because it, it's back to meritocracy. And uh, I guess the good news is we're probably going to get some more good. We're not. There won't be as much woke shit. And we might get some more good stuff once in a while. You know, uh, right now, the last couple of weeks, watched a lot of stuff that I haven't totally hated. I've watched some stuff that I've hated. I've watched some stuff that started out good. Started out okay. I don't hate X-Men 97. I don't. Which is a damn shame because they fired the writer. <laughs> we'll see how it ends. We'll see how it ends, but... I don't hate X-Men 97. Uh, I would never tell you in a million years to subscribe to Hulu or Disney Plus to watch it, but I don't hate it. Let's go. Uh, so, yes, they want the government to get involved. Uh, over the last two decades, the writing profession uh, was further bolstered by a federal government that enforced and expanded antitrust law. So they had Sin Fin. They talk about Sin Fin, which is essentially... Uh, you couldn't own, uh, uh, like a movie studio, couldn't own theaters and a broadcaster, blah, blah, blah. That was all taken away. Uh, they try to mention that it was the Republicans who started this, but it was Bill Clinton in 1996. 
who made this shit really go crazy, um, and allowed broadcast like uh, used to be limited to how many radio stations a company could own in a market. That went away. Uh, you know, Disney couldn't buy ABC, but they obviously did. And there was just a point where they, you know, by the way, the rules are still there. They're just, eh, we're not going to enforce them. I, well, maybe they got rid of them, but the rules are still there. They're just not going to enforce them. So now we have these giant conglomerates, um, which makes it harder, uh, as Rob pointed out in the stream, for a guy to just go, you know, this George Lucas kid, let's give him a shot. I liked American Graffiti. Not going to happen now. George would have to go through um, basically DEI training. He'd be told, well, he's white. So at the very least, he has to give 50% credit to somebody on some diversity list that probably did nothing. Oh, you don't think that's happening? It's happening. Um, to get that, to get the job. I know there was something else down here. Give me just a moment. There it is. God, this is long. This is longer than the Shooty Gatwa article. So if you go all the way down uh, to, to uh, I think, the third or fourth government, it says T, uh, the TV film industry is now controlled. There we go. There we go. That's good. Well done. Uh, the film and TV industry is now controlled. Mm, damn it. I just choked. fuck was that goddamn desert air kills you and now it's like it's like soup outside here in texas got a big storm coming in oh the film and tv industry is now controlled by only four major companies so uh i'll ask all the antitrust in the world all the unions in the world couldn't stop any of this uh and i don't think they should Thank you, X-Ray Girl. I got your message. Uh, I don't think they should. I think we let it play out and fall apart. The, th the problem I have is when shit starts falling apart, toe heads like this fucking moron say, well, the government's got to come in and stop it. No, you need to let it fall apart. And then something better will come out of it. You know, when, when giant corporations are billions of dollars of debt and still running, you, you got to wonder, how, how does that even fucking work? Well, you don't understand. Maybe I'm a dummy, but um, uh, I'm not a profitable company if I'm in debt. I don't know how I can have profits and be in debt. Um. What is to be done? The most direct solution would be government intervention. No. No. Let it fail. That's the best solution. Because I sure as fuck don't want any of my tax money, which I fucking hate giving anybody anyway because it's theft, going to fucking Hollywood for pretend you call yourselves the workers. You're not the fucking workers. You're writers. You sit in your ass and you type. Okay? It's, it's, it's a gift. Not many people can do it. Mad respect. You're not a fucking worker. Stop saying that. It's disrespecting people who actually fucking work. You're an artist. Fine with that. You're an artist. Worker. Get the fuck out of here, worker. You know, there was a time when writers used to do things like go to war and work. Now they go to some art school. I was about to say, drop a game word. Um, and move directly from their parents' house in with 10 roommates in Burbank. <clears throat> and for a minute there, they were getting jobs because of their junk and their skin color or they just trans themselves to fucking get a get a job. Oh, that oh, that never happens. Yeah, it does. There are people who would chop off their dick to get a job in Hollywood. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why I I don't know. 
Uh, it's it's. I think they build it up in their head that it's this really alluring place. It's a shitty place to work. I mean, if you're a good artist and you truly love film, uh, and you're there for the like, I, I still think it would be a shitty place to work now. Probably used to be pretty fun, you know. But it's just being an artist. You have to be a player. You have to be uh, a great negotiator. <clears throat> you have to be a fucking hustler. And you have to do a lot of things like have um, strategic friendships. They aren't genuine, uh, no, which I, I hated. I hated everything about it. The whole culture there is shit. And it, it honestly, it, I think it'd be much better uh, for a decentralized, for decentralized entertainment. It's working out for gaming okay. I think it's working out for gaming okay. I don't know if Hollywood can do it. I, I don't know if uh, scripted entertainment can do it. We'll find out. But I can tell you what won't work. Um, more unions and government intervention. I think I can tell you what will work. Making better stories. And not pissing off half your audience. You can circle jerk each other all you want with your fucking unions and your government intervention. But if you're putting out shit, it's not going to help. It's just going to take more money from us to stop your bleeding that you caused. Go fuck yourself. You're on your own. I want it to succeed, but not with my tax dollars. <laughs> not with my tax dollars. Nope. Oh, California will serve them up, though. Sure as hell. The government could also increase competition directly by funding more public film and television. I think there's enough propaganda out there. Thank you very much. Uh, it could establish a universal basic income for artists and writers. Oh, this guy's a commie. Gal. Commie. Uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's all I wanted to point out. I read this whole thing, and they're like, government intervention. Universal income. For what? For you to write a bad She-Hulk script? Go fuck yourself. That universal income comes from me uh, and uh, all the Americans out there, especially Californians. How do you like? How'd you like paying for Hollywood? How'd you like subsidizing all the theaters that some of them are now for sale or thinking about Chapter Eleven again? How'd you like funding all that? I didn't. Let's get super chats. So that's why uh, you get more and more of these articles, and they're they're all saying government intervention. No, hell no. What you doing, X-ray girl? She's probably she's chilling. Want to come in for super chats, or do you want you want to stay chilling? Doesn't matter, but I I could show my um my shirt. I got this from Chris Gore. It's a dick shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and film threat sucks hat. This is for you, Chris. Yeah, dick shark's the thing. It's a real thing. I think that I would love a multiverse of dick shark and teeth. Would you? I think it'd be funny. I don't think it's a good idea, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> it would be funny. I saw that on Twitter. I'm like, what, 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 what the fuck is that? And it's like, Duke Shark, dude. I'm like, oh. it's so weird. <laughs> but thank you, Chris Gore. Shout out, Chris Gore, if you're out there. But honestly, I, I would rather have Dick Shark than Velma season Keith? two. Oh, <laughs> uh, most of the shit we're getting. G give, give me, give me the Dick Shark verse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah um shout out to you chris gore love you and i can't talk still oh my god i sound horrible <clears throat> yeah i i've been struggling with that too did i read are these new 
No. Oh, you know what? It probably unhighlighted when I disappeared. That's okay. Uh, I here, I'll, I got out. it there. There we go. Those are the ones you read. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this uh, clusterfuck of a show. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. Uh, but uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, Michael for twenty dollars says, "Chris, please make sure they check out uh, check for a PFO, a small hole in your heart. It's caused my stroke, and it is uh, fixable. But they don't always check. I just hit my fourth anniversary, and I am recovered. Uh, make that stroke your bitch, Chris. That's for Michael <laughs> for twenty dollars. Hail, hail." Uh, I bring and bad news for the fellowship. The Swamp Rats at Bad Reboot have got the rights to a One Punch Man film. <laughs> oh, no. And have hired the feminist writer Heather Campbell. She wrote Not All Men episode of the Twilight Zone reboot. Yeah, well, DOA. Sorry to hear that. Uh, or, and keep in mind, one of the Fallout writers is from Captain Marvel. Berg Flicka for $20. Thoughts going out to Chris. DEI is in, uh, embedding in Warhammer. Vinyl is standard. Uh, still have my 8-tracks as well. Glad you survived Vegas. We did. We did. Uh, the infamous El Guapo for 777. Want to say that this has become my favorite show with the legend uh, Chris Gore and Gary and Dad Rants. Me being <laughs> a dad of three high schoolers really resonates with the great duo, just want to let Chris know he's in my prayers, and so is his family. Till next time. Hell yeah. Uh, look for Mike. What is this? Uh, from uh, Cal Kalioth for $10. Look for a Mike Yabara tweet. Uh, in Mike regards Barra? I don't know if it's Mike. Well, it says Y Barra, but that's Mike Barra is like B-A-R-A. Barra. Uh, Regards to uh, that, this is tipping game markers uh, above retailer uh, retail if you like it. Oh yeah, okay. So that's somebody else. Yeah, he wanted to like tip game developers. Game develop what? Get the fuck out of here. I have been laughing for six hours now. Should counter with willing to refund if the experience is bad. Yes, that's what you absolutely should respond with. Uh, great yeah. show today. Get well soon, Chris. Thank you, David Taylor, for twenty dollars. One thing we do is we buy the game on other platforms if uh, it's a game you like. So that's another way to support. So there. Yeah. Uh, tipping game. Fuck. No. No. Uh, David Taylor for $20. Great. Uh, I read that one. Thank you. Get well soon, Chris. Uh, Fluggy for $10. I wish for a speedy recovery for Frank. Hail to the fellowship. And Gary, are you uh, caught up with Shogun? Uh, no, but I will be tonight, tonight. After this show, uh, I plan to hit the gym Whew. and then, uh, I'm going to watch the rest of, uh, TVs that I've not finished. So I'm going to finish fallout tonight. We're going to finish Shogun and I was on a rewatch of Cobra Kai. So we're, uh, just starting season five. We got to watch the finale of season four. We're just starting season five because Cobra Kai is coming out later this year too. Uh, last couple episodes have been fantastic. Well, the not the penultimate one, but the one before that, I did catch very good. Dude, when that guy cracked, I'll, I'll just keep it as uh, vague as I can. When dude cracks his head on that rock, you're like, whoa. Damn. Damn. Uh, Lord Botha for $9.99. As bad as Chris's speech is right now, he's probably can still read super chats better than Beardo and me. <laughs> Goji the King for ten dollars. If going solo is good for the prostate, then mine's immortal. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Hail the fellowship and speedy recovery, Frank Gore. Uh, B chain three one five for ten dollars. Oh, Gary, I forgot. Did my package get delivered unmolested? No, it was really molested. Like, you know, uh, said it dropped off shortly before you left to Vegas. Unsure if you saw my super chat last noon or hail. It did arrive. I, I received many packages. Mm. Many packages. But the only one I could show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
was actually going to show something. It's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. No. Um I know I know I don't want to show it. <laughs> show it. I'm getting a bunch of old UFO books from like the 50s. Oh, that's awesome. This is one of the best. So getting that and I got a reprint of the Incall, which is oh. fucking awesome. The I omnibus. like that book. Yeah, this is awesome. Good shit. Good shit. Okay. Uh, Buddy Rabbit for $10. Like I said last week, Fallout is a mediocre show, even for a normie market. If you like 4 and 76, you might like this. I'm not a, uh, it's not a very good show without the IP attached. It's a solid 3.5, 4 out of 10. So yesterday, so I'm trying to refrain from talking about it because we're going to talk about it a lot on Friday Night Tights when I finished it. Um, yesterday I said the first episode, I'd give it like seven out of 10, right? That's what I said. Mm -hmm. First episode up to the point where she walks to the vault. That's where I saw. I've now seen up, uh, but I can't say Miss Neurotic likes it. She oh, she loves, doesn't? She like no, she likes it. Oh. She likes the aesthetic, all the, all that 50s stuff. Uh, and, uh, it's, yeah. I did notice that that, like, a. Uh, a communist satellite crashed and they really wanted to show the CCP and the sickle <laughs> and hammer. And I'm like, it, uh, a satellite doesn't crash like that. <laughs> 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 like it's not in one piece, dude. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's that, but it's probably in the game. Satellites don't crash like that. Uh, Josh Brolin, Josh Brolin's poetry for nine 99. Uh, sh uh, shooty, shooty, shooty. He dances. With his kilt covered booty, booty, booty. I don't know what kind. I don't know what kind, but it puts me in a moody, moody, moody. When he laughs, I feel inspired from my hair to my nudie, nudie, nudie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Josh Brolin is the worst. Vogon poetry is better than Josh Brolin poetry, okay? <laughs> This is up there with uh, Gina. Gina <laughs> Crunchy <laughs> Taco. <laughs> An internet loser for nine ninety nine. I was just rewatching your unsubscribed appearance. I really hope you get to do more with those guys when you get your rights restored. It would be epic if you got if you go do a range day with them. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. That would be fun. Yeah, say. that was a fun podcast. Uh, Fluggy for ten dollars. I wish for a speedy recovery for Frank. Hail to the fellowship. And Gary, you're a, uh, I oh, asked if it's caught up with Shogun the last two episodes. Fantastic. I read that one already. Uh, Josh for $10. Nick Offerman is a disappointment. Um, yeah. In last of us and, and civil war for sure. Uh, Andrew Matthews for 10 British pounds. The best thing about fallout is Michael Rappaport playing himself a pathetic coward and a crybaby. Yeah, that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny. Uh, bona fide metal, bona fide metal for 10 euros says they tried to retcon Fallout New Vegas out of canon with the show. Bethesda can get go to hell. I almost said something else. Uh, yeah. There are also three Fallout games Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and Fallout New Vegas. Everything else is bad fan, uh, bad fiction, uh, bad fan fiction like the Frontier and Fallout. Oilers Workshop for $9.99. 80% of the stock market is zombie companies. This is true. Meaning they extract more than they produce. If they were allowed to collapse, it would equal uh, it would uh, equalize inflation and raise wages. Disney has become one now. Yep. Yep. Big fucking shell game. My, my dad was really good at the stock market. Played, uh, played it very well. And I'm like, uh, I don't ever want to do this. I'm not into this. Uh, I believe in saving. Uh, I believe in tangible stuff. Stuff you could actually use. Not some electronic thing that might, uh, some electro, uh, electromagnetic pulse comes is all fucking gone. You know, you own a house, you live in a house, that house is yours. You just got to protect it, that's all. Thomas Bergman for $10. Uh, suspect as is correct about 
Fallout New Vegas. Okay, it took me like I'm like Fonzie. Oh, Fonz, Fonz, Fonva, Fonva, which is Fallout New Vegas. Lore issue. Obsidian did Fallout New Vegas, and it was hailed as miles better than Fallout Three, which was Bethesda. Like all good communists, Bethesda must destroy competition uh, that outshines. Okay, so I didn't. I would suspect that Bethesda would favor the Bethesda stuff. That probably isn't a bit uh, isn't a stretch, right? Oh boy, uh, figure nugget for one ninety nine. <clears throat> Love you, Gary. Happy recovery to Crint Gore one ninety nine. Uh, okay, I gotta read it right. Love you, Gary. Happy Rick Overy to Crint Gar one ninety nine. I think you're making fun of not being able to talk there. Which is why I left it. Which is why you I'm left so it. Which sorry. is okay. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Chris, I, I'm sorry to Chris. Uh once I found out Chris was okay, <laughs> I called him a game award. Uh I was too nice and said too many gay things to him. Yeah, that, Chris is not going to respond well to that. I know. <laughs> it's the hospital worker in me, though. It is. It is. You're good bedside manner. But uh, I think roasting him would be good for the soul. I think you'd be <laughs> fine with it. South uh, Perspective for $5. You should invite Ark uh, from ArcCast to Friday Night Tights. We should. He's very good. Uh, he knows about tabletop gaming and culture. Greetings from Argentina. Greetings. Ooh. You have a good leader. Uh, Dan Basque, pretty jealous of you right now. But, yeah. he, but he won't be able to say that on Twitter very long. <laughs> a sarcastic mailman for $5. Usually lurking, but it's my day off. Hail. Uh, hail, everyone. Up to up to 199 days sober off opiates. Congratulations. Oh, congrats. A hard one to kick because it's addictive, right? Hyper addictive. Yeah. And uh, the reason it's hyper addictive, no, well, it's not just that it's addictive. You get sick when you get off them. You get oh. sick. It's like having mm -hmm. oh, like the worst kind of flu along with like crippling depression. That sucks. Good for you. Because the opiates uh, fuck with. Um, oh my God! What's what's your brain? I, I'm blanking on them so i'm having a stroke too your brain regular dopamine it fucks with mm. uh your, your oh, dopamine balance I see. right okay. so it, your brain has to readjust after. you get really fucking mm -hmm. sad and you're also mm -hmm. sick as fuck uh imagine just uh puking and shitting all the time that's pretty much it you're sweating you can't sleep everything sucks yeah that's it's really horrible. difficult to get off um, but thankfully, the drug companies came up with another drug to help kick that. But then you have to kick off that drug, which they'll probably <laughs> develop another drug. They've actually gone so far as to develop a shot, which mm. apparently works um, in some cases. The danger with that stuff is those shots uh, and other stuff are inhibitors. So you, it just inhibits you from... Like, you can do the drug, but you won't get as high, but motherfucker mm. will try and then die. Because, Overdose. Yeah. So, there's that. Uh, Jason Cannon for $5. Gary, uh, where are you at with Shogun? Uh, starting the Penopta episode tonight. Uh, should do a video on the show that has Japanese people speaking Japanese. LOL. I, I should do, just, I should find a, a Japanese review. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, I quite like it. The whole plan is to for for this channel is um, to review more stuff. I'm just going to be reviewing more stuff this year. <laughs> a lot more reviews. Sacred Cow for six twenty two. Are you a fan of Ninja Turtles, Gary? Yes, the OGs, absolutely. It's it's pretty much the only. Um anthropomorphic superhero I've ever liked. I've never been a big fan of them. I like the turtles. That's it. Um, But uh, they're awesome. And the reason I like the turtles is because they were straight off ripped from Frank Miller's Daredevil. And uh, 
I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Luis Suevis for five dollars. Gary, uh, there you are, Gary. Yeah, sorry. We had a major hiccup in the beginning of the show. Uh, if you missed any of this, you can just hang on to the link, or it will be re-uploaded, uh, an edited version, without the lightning strike knocking out our power uh, for a brief moment. Uh, in it. Alu, uh, what is this? Alu Iger. Alu Iger, the talent terrorist. <laughs> for $4.99. Uh, been enjoying Fallout so far. Love the setting. Wasteland reminds me a lot of home in uh, Wokistan. <laughs> uh, piece of utter destruction for $4.99. Not sure about Fallout, but the final episode did make me want to play the game again. It felt like it, it even breaks the lore. Uh, prayers for Chris. Thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Brendan Lucas for $5. Loving Fallout. For every bit of wokeness, the show, uh, the show pervs on Lucy. Uh, we should be happy that and that take what we can get. There is just one lore issue. I'll say this: there's um, I don't. Mm, yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna wait. Okay. I'll I'll say I'll I'll say it again. You could see the DEI check boxes when they show yeah. up, like absolutely every single fucking time. It's like oh, fuck. It's like dropping an anvil in the middle of a scene. It's like fuck. Uh, Rebecca Gold. Good luck, everybody. Thanks, Ian. Uh, Commander Cody for one ninety nine. New show, Dancing with Daleks. Dancing with Daleks. There will be Dancing with Daleks at some thing. There will be Dancing with Daleks. Uh, Fear to Tardo for five dollars. Tardo, hope Frank Gar do good now. If not. Jay can adopt so live live with Tardo. Can finger paint and make macaroni pictures with Tardo all day. Lock it in. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh Commodore fan 64 for $5. I'd rather be forced to watch the 2000s live action Garfield movie for two weeks straight than repeat. On repeat, then this Disney Doctor Who bullshit. Keep it up, Gary. Cheers. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, Sam AT for 50 Mexican dollars. Gary, I'm upset with you because you haven't scolded Mark Hamill's new tweet about the Orange Man. Hail to the Fellowship. Well, I don't do every one. Uh, if I did, that wonderful collection of my responses to Mark uh, Hamill would have been five pages long. I try to do it like once a week. You don't want to be a reply guy either. I am Mark Hamill's reply guy. At this point, I am. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I got to be somebody's reply guy. I've got so many. Why can't I do it? I'm not allowed to do it. Equality. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I'm just pointing something out. It, it's, it's not even bad. It's like, hey, go visit your fucking granddaughter, dude. She's here. She's alive. Uh, but, uh, to the person who asked yesterday if I was, if I have mental problems again, yes. Uh, but, uh, if my kids were in that situation, they know that they don't, I don't even have to fucking say anything. They know. Welcome to fatherhood. You take care of that kid. Cause, uh, that, that conversation doesn't come up with all the pro-choice shit. You know what needs the, uh, dudes need to take care of their kids too. Yeah. That fucking needs to happen. That's that's part of the problem. So uh, maybe if uh, more dudes took care of their kids, it wouldn't be this problem. I mean, it'd still be there, but uh, probably wouldn't be as prevalent. I don't know. It's for the world to decide. PJ, maybe for 373. Doctor, stranger, danger, fun meetup. Uh, even after the flight delays, to and from Scotland. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. We came from Scotland. We had Australians the there. We had Scottish. We had the Scottish. I think this is the same guy that gave yeah. me Misty. Sorry My about the delays. Uh, Disbrew was delayed. Uh, True Pop Culture 7, I think his stuff got delayed too. Aiden. Yeah. Aiden. Yeah. 
Yeah. Aiden Paladin was there. She was great. Uh, it, it uh, yeah, the the like all the all the all the flight nightmares. I'm like, yeah, 18 hour drive. <laughs> the drive out was fantastic. Um, there is a way like from where I live, you take the western route. You take 10. You go through the southern part of the states. You're like, like right up against the border of Mexico, but you can see all the like great Southwest. Then you cut through Vegas. The northern route, ah, man, coming through Texas, that's rough, dude, because you are just on back roads for miles for uh, 300 miles. That's brutal. Uh, motorcycle, maybe. Car, eh, not so much. Emilio has gifted five Nerdrotic memberships for $25. Uh, Joe DeSormo. 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 Looks French. It looks French. There's an X at the end. DeSormo. For $49.99. The battle to sobriety keeps my... uh, Keeps me in the fight to get there. Hell yeah. FYI, stop talking about Star Wars Disney. No one cares. I mean, I probably will. Uh, I what was shit. Disney, I can't stop talking about because they're in the news constantly. But uh Star Wars, yeah, when the Alkalite comes out, then I'll be done. I did not think my uh first video this year would be a Star Wars video. That that came out of nowhere. Yeah, because it's just something to point and laugh at now. Like, there's no, there, what's to accomplish other than pointing and laughing, which is fun. Anak Maman, abuser of Streamlabs for $2. Chris, a gamer word that that better? Chris is, a, uh, yes. Uh, take it easy, Chris Gore. You are loved by the fellowship. Also, you're gay, Gore. Says Ace. Uh, Shinigami. Shinigami. Woo. Gunter Odim for twenty dollars. The art cast knows about the Fallout lore and did a video on it. He's very based. Get him on FNT for fuck's sake. Talk to Carl Benjamin if you need to. They are friends. Okay. Definitely. Thank you. Hell yeah. Well, uh, I guess we're going to be covering Fallout on FNT probably quite a bit, and then. Uh, there's the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Then there's Rebel Moon. Mm-hmm. That's all happening in the next day. So, Rebel Moon watch party on this channel for the members. Uh, Jake the Movie Geek for a one ninety nine. What uh, want to watch Doctor Who? Where should I start? Uh, I would start with well, I mean, at same as Spider Man at the beginning, but I would uh, I'd break people in with Modern Who. So yeah, start new with who. New Who. The Ninth Doctor. Eccleston. You'll love yep. him. And then go up to about season eight of Pica- uh, Capaldi. And then um, and then if you love it, then go back to like hit the classics. And I just start in order. I just start in order. Uh, Brendan, like they're slowly releasing Blu-rays of the classics. I think they're they've done half the series now. They're doing it out of order. It makes no fucking sense at all. Uh, just got another fourth doctor season, but, um, yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's just how long it takes to master it. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, BGS confirmed that Vegas was not retconned, says Brendan Lucas for two British, uh, two British pounds proper money. Okay. Logan Bissett for $2. Hey Gary, are you still watching X-Men 97? I am. And I, I like it. I kind of like it. I'm a little behind. I'm one episode behind. Enjoying the original X-Men series, Gambit's charm and his uh, fling with Rogue are a highlight for me. Uh, what reading order are, would you suggest, asked George Anderson for $4.99. Well, uh, you can start, I would start with uh, Uncanny x well, Giant Size X-Men 1, uh, read a reprint, and go from there, and then that hits, uh, that goes to Uncanny X-Men 94. All right, so X-Men... Started out in the 60s, and there was the the classic, you know, it was Angel, Iceman, Marvel Girl, Cyclops, The Beast. Uh, then it essentially was canceled, but not canceled. They just reprinted a bunch of issues uh, for a, a long period of time. Then Giant Size X-Men came out and rebooted it, and they picked it back up with 94, 
which is essentially, you know, the Phoenix Saga. And then there's the Dark Phoenix Saga. That's the order you want. That's where you want to start, right? Uh, and then if you want to go back and read the classic stuff, it's pretty cool. You know, introduces Magneto and all that. But uh, that's, I think, you know, for the animated series, that's where you start. If you want to read along. And if it's getting people to go back and read Claremont and, uh, and, and Cockrum and Claremont and Byrne. By the way, Byrne had a lot of input during his era. Let's not forget that. John Byrne had a lot of uh, story input. Uh, Jeff, for $5, I heard that Chris Gore had a stroke of uh, bad luck in Vegas. Oh, oof. I'm glad he's on the mend praying for him. Cheers. Uh, Jar Rare Bear for $5. Normies have objective permanence issues. If uh, an intellectual property isn't constantly brought to the forefront, they simply forget it even exists. Yeah, and like normies make the world go round, right? So for the for those of us who seek this stuff out, most don't. It comes across their menu. Um, most normies like will sit on Netflix and watch and flick across their UI, and then there's the trailers that pop up. I'm gonna watch that shit for half an hour. An yeah, hour. I do that. Yeah, <laughs> Melissa, Melissa does that. I, I've done it. You know, like when I'm looking for uh, for like anime, I do that. Like, does this look fine? You know. And that's why verbal recommendations are so good because I always check out a show someone tells me. So if something's good, I'll watch it. But right. I wait for people like Gary to watch it first. Yeah, or talk other hear it from other people. Like Fallout, you know, it was it was something I was going to watch, but it wasn't like a, my highest priority. It's like I never played the game. Never played the game. But uh, One Piece was a fluke. That wasn't my highest priority either because I'm like, I don't know oh, anything. I'm like, mm -hmm. I know there's like a zillion volumes out there and whatever. Um, uh, but everybody tells me like this is as far as lore and character buildings, like one of the best, if not the best. I'm like, OK. And uh, watched it and went shit because I thought the trailers were dumb. Uh, but uh, the aesthetic that they used was great. Absolutely great. Uh, Magna Defender 98 for $10. The, uh, the most gullible people in America are those who still cover their faces. If you're still afraid of the cold four years on, even though 99% of the people are back to normal, you admit you're easily controlled. Yep. Oh, and we still see it. And you know, it might sound kind of mean. I think it's okay to laugh. I think sh we need to bring shame back. You know, light shame. Mid to light shame. Uh, Buddy Rabbit for twenty dollars. They can say it didn't involve a retcon all they like, but there are problems that uh, inevitably are retcons. Word of God doesn't apply uh, when the material itself has incongruity. incongruity. Ah, I got that one yeah. uh, with what the author says. Four out of ten. There you go. That is a debate going on. Did it retcon New, uh, New Vegas? Did it not? I have no fucking idea, by the way. I just see the debate is going on. That's a decent nerd debate. I think we want to get into the, if if it was retconned, then why? Why? Uh, synthetic Thief for $5. First time Super Chat. Oh. Mainly here to say, uh, uh, after your uh, FF53 with Ben Davidson interview, you need to read into One Piece as its author believes in it too. Oh, I did. Oh, really? So uh, the whole um, the micro no What was that? The solar theory, the micronovas. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. It was a uh, very cool show. I hope we get him back. Because uh, I went down the rabbit hole of uh, Suspicious Observers channels. Fucking great. Great. By the way, big news uh, all over the Twitters, probably not anywhere else, is Graham Hancock's debate. I'm two hours in. I'm going to watch the rest of it. Um, we'll definitely discuss it on Forbidden Frontier. We have Wandering Wolf. Um, who, who? Uh, or no, we don't. Do we have, when do we have him? Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Okay. So he had, he had dinner with Graham Hancock right after that debate. Shut the front door. He did. Go go to his oh. go to his Twitter. He he yeah. So uh he'll be on with us. The Wandering Wolf is fucking awesome. I met him at Cosmic Summit. And uh 
He's got uh, the Sage Wall in Montana, but we will be discussing uh, Graham Hancock is a reporter, and he uh, fully believes that there was an ancient civilization, uh, prehistoric ancient civilization. He debated an, uh, an academic, I think archaeologist, doesn't look like that guy, goes out in the field. I think that was the guy who had cancer, oh, and it delayed the debate because he had cancer. But you don't want to shit on him too much. But um, he also accused Graham of being a white supremacist. <laughs> so that's the clip that's going around right now. And it's like, first time, Graham? And, and no, it's not his first time, but it's like the shit we go through too. Like, you criticize something, well, it's th then it's white supremacist. And yes, the Atlantis theory, the guy tried to say it was it was it bolsters white supremacy. Um, Graham's never said that the Atlanteans were white <laughs> or aliens. I don't think anybody thinks that for one fucking second and doesn't like who cares. Uh, we don't know what they look like. Uh, a lot of people deny they exist, but to like refuse to look for it because you think you're bolstering white supremacy you know hey the nazis breathed air and drank <sighs> water shit uh buddy rabbit thank you again uh Aaliyah wells for 20 uh yeah is that twenty thousand uh martian pesos uh watch one piece because of gary loved it rewatching with my seven-year-old son brilliant brilliant Aaliyah. the kid love it to be clear, one retcon for people saying that there wasn't one. The Shady Sands issue is a blatant retcon since Shady Sands is a functioning narrative tool within New Vegas. It's mentioned as a fully fledged econ economy and power grid. And I, I'm at that part, Buddy Rabbit. Thank you for $20. So that was a working town, working city that was destroyed in the, in the show. That was destroyed in the show. Uh, the solutions to Fallout's problems will be solved almost immediately by making it an independent c continuity. I'm not a fan of that idea, but Bethesda says it's part of the established canon, which was a blatant mistake. Uh, same thing that happened to Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery wouldn't be as hate. It's still a fucking terrible TV show. But if they just come out and said this takes place in the Kelvin timeline, would have solved 75% of their issues with the, with the fan base. Like most of them would have fucked off. And that's why they chose not to do that. Uh, Bastard Luigi for four ninety nine. dollars Last water cooler show I had was Heroes Season 1. That shit was phenomenal. Yeah. Didn't get into Game of Thrones, read the books, and knew they had no plan after that. What? What? Okay, chat, what's the last water cooler show? People might say Succession. Succession, um, I didn't like it, by the way. I liked first season. And I thought it just became a bunch of people uh, who are fucking terrible, and I don't care about any of them. So uh, I didn't like Succession very much. Uh, that was weekly. What's a water cooler show that everybody talked about that had this build up? Uh, Better Call Saul. Yeah, that was a good one. Better Call Saul might might have been the last one. I mean, it's arguable. Better Call Saul wasn't as big as Breaking Bad, which is you know. Well, Breaking Bad was pretty fucking close to Game of Thrones ending. Mm. Ratings wise, I believe. It's pretty big. So I'm not gonna I, I don't know which one was bigger. Tiger King. <laughs> that, I mean, technically. That really? was a COVID show. Um, <laughs> but a series like Breaking Bad, a series like Game of Thrones that a lot of fucking people are talking about every week. Oh, Squid Game. Squid that Game was wasn't weekly, call. though. That's not a water cooler oh, yeah, show. Squid, gosh, Squid Game man. dropped all at once. People talked about it for a month, and then now Squid Game has um, been gone for almost two years, and does anybody really bring it up anymore? No. No. No, or is anybody really anticipating that season two? Many people, like myself, thought it shouldn't have never had one. But season two is coming out this year. Where's all the Squid Game chatter? I think Jeremy was... Uh, talking about more people were talking about One Piece than House of the Dragon. Are you high? So we're going to separate the One Piece anime and manga to One Piece live action. Not a lot of people talking about it. 
it's still being talked about because it was so phenomenal and good, and I'll talk about it. But, um, for example, there are lore videos being made about House of the Dragon and A Song of Ice and Fire right now. They've all had an uptick because there's an interest. Uh, interest. Now, it's not going to hit algorithmic millions of views, but they're getting hundreds of thousands of views consistently in a downtime. In a downtime, which will definitely go up soon as that, and, and it's starting to creep up now, which will go up as that show comes up. There's none of that shit happening with uh, One Piece. There's no lore videos being made constantly about the live action. Uh, there's probably some, but... Uh, and we, and we know what's happening in both shows. Both shows, if you read the book, you know what's happening. Um, I think there would be more of that if uh, One Piece released weekly. Because it would create that kind of, uh, it would create a, a, a fellowship of its own around it. Around uh, the live action part. We have an offer here. Mahler said he could clarify the retcon in Fallout if you Tell want. Tell him to come in. All right. I guess we can read Super Chats in the meantime because that yeah. message was about five, six minutes ago. Okay, Carrier, a Raccoon City story for $5. Sup, Gary, unrelated post here, but uh, you strike me as a social distortion listener, maybe of their earlier stuff from the 80s or maybe uh, TSOL. Uh, yes. Yes to all of the above. I've seen social distortion probably the most than I've seen any other punk band, but that's because Mike Ness tour like a motherfucker and uh he would do at the the old bacchanal in san diego he would do like 11 shows in a row and i would go to six <clears throat> what's up Mahler? hello hi hello. Can we um actually fix your audio issue gary uh can you raise your audio a bit who me yeah again it went down again yeah how long has it been down uh, a little while why didn't you say it anything was it was fine when it was just. No, when it can't talking. be just fine. It's got to be really good. You have to say stuff. Okay. You have to tell me things. Okay. Because it's automatically meta PC. Yeah. It's, it's automatically dropping down. Oh God. Yeah. When something's wrong, let me know immediately, please. Extra. Audio. Don't mention yeah. I was loud. It's, it's, how's how am I doing? Yeah. You're good now. Everyone's good. We're all good. Good lord. All right. Well, first of all. What was it like yesterday that I'd seen one episode of Fallout? I have now seen eight. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did there, Val. Yep, yep. Um, this has nothing at all to do with getting sent a hundred messages about how I'm completely wrong because I haven't seen later context. Uh, that was a fucking lie. The show gets seriously worse once you have full context. Just oh, that, no. <laughs> uh, that first episode, I have even more questions now than I had before, like in terms of what the fuck everyone was doing. But uh, I can save it for another time. What I was going to say is, the I, 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 there's an explanation because I've been reading up on it, right? Because I'm not familiar with uh, New Vegas, though it's not a short one. The the best sort of take on it that I've seen uh, seems to be that it's not impossible for this to fit in uh, in terms of continuity, but it is absolutely not something that uh, any fan or anybody who knows what happened in the world of Fallout. Uh, fans would want. Um, interestingly, the post I read about it actually compares it to uh, to try and help people understand, which I think is so funny. Um, it would be the equivalent of coming back to Star Wars after Episode Six and finding that the New Republic is falling apart and the Empire is taking over, like in the next episode. Um, there are efforts to, you know, push Shady, Shady Sands and the uh, NCR that were noble and and uh, there's loads of stories that relate to it and uh, as far as a lot of fans are concerned what they've done is like reset a continuity in order to yeah you know have whatever they want which um there's still a bit of debate on the timeline i think it's because it's slightly vague in terms of exactly when certain things happen but that um fallout fans are as annoyed uh, as star wars fans are in terms of the reset like why didn't we build something new? Why have you put us back into square one? Um, there's a bigger explanation for this that I could read, but I don't want to take it. Would it would it would even my excessive uh, reading? <laughs> it, would, it, would, 
it would take about five minutes like as a speech. So if you'd want to know that, I, I might ask if I could do that on Open Bar with Drinker so that we can get a good baseline because this is from like a hyper fan. Oh, um, I, absolutely. And I'll be I'll be on with you tomorrow. No, I think that clear. like that's the thing is uh, I even if I don't know the lore, I say respect it all the fucking time. And um, I think there's certain people involved in the show that uh, I think Jonathan Nolan's good. I think his wife is not. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, he there's a point where we got to start going, you know, I, I don't give a fuck about your last name and being related to a pretty good director. You're part of this, too. And then there's the Captain Marvel writer. And, and you, you, you know, like, and I saw some, I, wa I watched some interviews with her yesterday. And I don't want to tip my hat too much because I want to save it for F&T and Open Bar. But um, the Maximus character is dog shit. Absolute dog shit. Like, I mean, I I have strong feelings on the show now. Yesterday, I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I guess that's how it goes. And I really like the ghoul. But I, I like the actor, so <laughs> there's 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 that. I could just follow him around, uh, pretty much, uh, and I'd be fine. But um, we'll we'll definitely talk about it tomorrow because mm -hmm. I I have three episodes to go. I didn't get as far as you guys did because I'm watching it with my wife, and she had to go to bed. So fair enough. Fair, is that um, fair enough? I mean, that's the thing. I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything in terms of directing you in a particular way. But I would love to talk to you the second you finish it about what's in this show. Ooh, oh, volume went down again. I feel like an alien somewhat with uh, how bad I think the show is. <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. No, I mean, I felt like that too with some stuff that everybody was like, and I was like, ah. I'm getting a little bit with Civil War. Not Wait, much. People like Civil War? Some people do, yeah. Some people like Civil oh. War. I thought it was terrible, but uh, yeah, so um real quick aside windows did an update and now if i get too close to my mic it automatically dips the volume that's so stupid yeah same for me in, in terms of it's it not being annoying <laughs> it's fucking annoying and it's not supposed to do that so i'm 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 holding the volume with my mouse right now and it still doesn't do it <laughs> oh, it's no. so annoying ah okay uh yeah fallout can't wait to talk to you about it tomorrow oh hey you would have seen because there's those little bits you would have seen the part with the scientist who outran a midi gun that was two meters away from him right? okay. that was so <laughs> funny that like that would never oh, happen like the gatling gun that was <laughs> shooting like 50 caliber bullets and it managed like, a, thousand like rounds. a thousand rounds at once and it's like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> That shit was funny. Um, and that is crazy because that is the thrust of the plot for almost all the characters is him escaping that scenario. And there's I have no, no way idea he should have. Did it's just some old dude with a dog running away. It's the guy from. Away. Is that guy from Lost? He is. Yeah. 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 Nice guy from Lost. Still working. Yeah. Fucking Lost. <sighs> what you doing? You want to hang out? We're almost done. Yeah. I mean, it's, what, what are you guys up to? You sound like you were. Getting a lot of Fallout super chats. Is this catching up from Real BBC? No, no. this is today. Yes. Oh, all right, fair enough. This is today. Fallout is the flavor of the, I assume, week. few weeks. It's only been out a week and a bit. I, right? I, th I think it dies down in, in in a week. I see Mark the Cyborg loved the show. I'm gonna have to kill him. I mean, I'm gonna have to talk to him. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> like the show. Take out his right leg. I promise you. <laughs> it's a. Lot. Um, Oh, it's it's fun for me because I just want to know what I miss, really. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I think that most of the connective tissue is very much and then, if you know what I mean. It's like I've got this happening, and the writer was like, "Yeah, but now I want this, and then I want this, and then I, there was like barely anything connecting anything. It's all uh, very for, coincidental." For me, I think I connect with the like Lucy a lot and the Ghoul, and I like those characters. It's, it's not. Every time you say things about the show, it makes me like it less. So <laughs> <laughs> I will not be watching EFAP so I can like it forever. <laughs> Molo oh, ruins everything. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have notes. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's like an, an entertainment, entertainment value type of show. I liked it. But yeah, a, a lot of the details, not very good. 
Yeah, you know, um, I think something that struck me, Gary, was how bad the dialogue was, typically speaking. I think they try to get away with it being satirical slash shit on purpose. But um, there's some that made my fucking like eyebrows raise in terms of like I have to rewind and listen to that. In a way, they just said that. For example, quote, this is episode four, so it's all good. Uh, regular boys get angry and pee on the wall. Clever boys, when they get angry, oof, you're lucky not to have seen where that can lead. Yeah, I I did notice that, and I, was like, and I went, "What does that mean?" I I don't recall um, ever seeing a guy pee on the wall when he was angry. <laughs> I I, I, where does that fucking well, you, come you, from? You, that sounds like the, feminist gobbledygook. <laughs> the point of the quote, I'm assuming, is that it's scarier when smart people get angry. Yeah, and there's a better bad. way to say that. Yeah, there's, there's a much way better yeah. ways to say that than, than they than pee reg- on the wall. Pee on the wall. <laughs> It's like okay, yeah, feminist gobbledygook. It's a woman who hasn't talked to a lot of dudes. Well, she's seen a lot of guys pee on walls, apparently. Apparently, yeah, maybe she. I've uh, never seen a guy pee on the wall. I was gonna say that was Louis C.K., but he wasn't peeing, and it was into a plant. Oh (laughs) my god! (laughs) All right. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) <laughs> did he do it into a curtain at the end oh uh, did he wipe <laughs> that off was so funny <laughs> the show i know i saw that and uh yeah it's supposed to give a sign that this guy's uh just a savage not right? normal <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> uh, i'd like to see what would happen if all of us just okay this is from zian who in two parts so i gotta read the first part first Without my, you are on part one, yeah. Without my freaking volume dipping. God, this is getting annoying. This is getting so oh, annoying. Um, I'd like to see what would happen if all of us stopped talking about Star Wars entirely. FNT, film threat, drinker, mauler, drunk through PO, doomcock, literally everyone. Any super chats, etc. Just respond with Star Wars is dead. Sorry, I'm adjusting my volume again. Uh, I'd like to see how Disney and the corporate media react after six months of silence from us. Well, um, I think they'd be happier, right? Because that would mean they would the be extremely happy. It, all the people celebrating Star Wars would still be talking about that it. Would make them, no matter what. Yeah, it would. It would be. It would be a boon for them. As far as I'm concerned, it's always been cathartic to talk about how much they destroyed something that we're all big fans of, and then it gives us opportunities to talk about why we like why the, you know, the thing itself. I think it's fun to make fun of stuff like Acolyte, you know. It's like, uh, in a, in a way, a, an activity that I like to do along with a bunch of other ones with friends. It's and it's um, it just doubles up. Actually, Nutza made a, a, a semi regular EFAB guest. She made a video recently uh, defending the notion of criticism, even in the in the broad sense of like obsessive sort of uh, rants against particular IPs that have fallen apart. She talks about how it's actually uh, uh, absolutely. She she says she is more um, charged to make videos of expression when something horrible happens to an IP she loves than she is when something great does because everything being good to her feels much more normal and natural it's It's normal and natural and um you could definitely make a video celebrating that but uh when she said something pissed. funny in the video where she was like, when you have A-list actors with like journeyed and veteran creators with hundreds of millions of dollars, it's fucking weird that it ends up being terrible. Like that that's not normal. <laughs> but we're in a world where that's become very normal for some reason. It is now the new it is the new norm, as they like to say. Uh that's where the passion arises. So when I started this channel, Mahler, many years ago. I had a tagline that was awful, and I decided not to use it. Oh yeah, maybe um, no. Yeah, of course. I'll tell you because that's what it, that, I mean. That's what it is. It just didn't roll off the tongue. But it's comic book conversations, it, and it's comic shop conversations. That's what it is. That's the whole the, the the tagline is. That's what this channel was made on is comic shop conversations. I made this because I didn't have my comic shop anymore, and my favorite part of my comic shop was talking to the customer every day. And we talked about this shit every fucking day because we're nerds mm-hmm. and we care. And, uh, you know, there is a time where apathy will set in. And like I said, with Star Wars, with me in particular, and I'm not going to speak for anybody else. They can do what they want, but I'm not a Star Wars channel. 
No. Not even close. I'm closer to a Star Wars channel, and I'm not a Star Wars channel. Yeah. Like, uh, I won't talk about it as much as everybody else does, uh, but I will definitely laugh at the Acolyte because hmm. if I can get a laugh, and maybe, possibly, I mean, you'll be the judge, ultimately, you can get a laugh out of it, then we're laughing. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> And the best way to get to Hollywood to get them to change, if they ever will, which they probably won't, is mock them. That's that cuts deep. Their ego is that that is their uh that is their currency. That is their currency. But uh if everybody stopped talking about it for six months, uh Disney would take that as a win. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. win. Um, but my motivation is not to it's to talk to you guys. I don't, I don't really give a fuck what Disney does at this point. I don't care. They can burn. I find that part of our job is making the actual entertainment out of the failures of entertainment. Yep. So, like, nobody here, I would recommend anyone watch Acolyte. Until, of course, if I see it, and it's great, and I recommend it for us one thing, but obviously I wouldn't recommend it with the track record they currently have. We could check it out, and then we... We'll try and uh, turn it into something that you guys can find entertaining. That's kind of what we try to do. And there is this outside possibility that it's good. It's, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. <laughs> it's very unlikely. It's improbable. But we won't know until we watched it. Yep. And if I'm going to watch something, and this being a pop culture channel, I'm going to talk about it. So... Uh, yeah, I'll just, like, when I stop being in personally, again, this is for me, when I'm personally not interested in something, I don't talk about it, algorithm or not. You know, or or if I'm not super informed. Like, you don't see me making, uh, like, I'll bring it up in a video, but I'm not making specific gaming videos about Sweet Baby Inc. or whatever, because I, I, don't, I don't know the world. I just don't. So... Bulk Squat Thrust for $10 says uh, movies, TV, and music is just product now. That's true. That, that, that was the point I was trying to make. Hope it came across. Uh, consume product and then get excited for next product. I really heavily dislike streaming and its consequences. Yes, and part of that consequence is the binge model, which made it very disposable. Mm. Yeah. Because it's, be it's being brought up, not by me. Uh, Mahler. It's being brought up by Forbes and IGN. <laughs> Ooh. And other people are chiming in. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't release all these things all at once. It's dumb. Uh, from a business standpoint, it's really dumb. From a viewer standpoint, sure. But but if I like my show, I was to bring it up to Gentleman, Mahler. We'd still be talking about it if it was weekly. Absolutely. I'd be recommending it every week, too, because I'd see a new episode and be like, that was good. Everyone check it out. But now it's whew, gone. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, that is really sad, actually, because it is kind of gone. And how long did that take uh, from release? Well, like, I want to say three weeks, four weeks, it just disappeared. And, that, and you know, and that's with an effort of us trying to bring it up, you know, almost artificially, like, yeah, yeah, it's a good thing that's new, get it. Meanwhile, Shogun coming out each week, I still people, people are still refreshed on talking about it and asking about it. Yep. And it's, it's good. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. We'll see how it ends. Well, I, I know how it ends. It, they stick to the book somewhat, you know. Interesting random stuff for five Canadian pesos. Check out the original Chinese three body. Far better than the Netflix version uh, where Netflix did what Netflix does best. Yeah. Um, I was really digging it until those last two episodes where it just got kind of meh, meh. There is a good scene in it. Like, well, there's a lot of good scenes and there's some good acting, but there in episode five, there's a, a massacre, dude, <laughs> a straight up massacre. That's crazy. Uh, Andrew Espinoza for $5. Gary, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you in Vegas. Can't wait to hopefully make it next year. Cheers from incredible shirt guy. Hey, it's great to see you, man. Thanks for the shirts. Uh, VJ Noel 316 for 199 prayers to the almighty gore. Prayers to Chris, for sure. Prayers, good, good vibes. Oh, we got we got more. We're sitting there chatting. Fallout, man. Yeah, people are talking about Fallout. Yes, they are. I wonder how long that'll last as well, since it all got dropped. Mm, like I said, I imagine one more week. I think one more week. Like, well, if, I, then. <laughs> if I was to do a video, I'd have to do it like tonight. <laughs> like, 
I can't, which I can't do. So we'll just talk about it in the streams. That's fine. Uh, Nick Brony for nine ninety nine. Vegas meetup was great. I might have drank too much, and I apologize again for trying to convince everyone that uh, or G's aren't so bad. That uh, orgies? Oh, orgies aren't so bad. I don't recall that conversation. Maybe you had it with yourself. I definitely didn't talk about that with you. Hail to the fellowship, uh, <laughs> bastard Luigi for nine ninety nine. When it comes to dialogue. That may be just the biggest reason uh, New Vegas fans are so irritated, myself included. Just watch some dialogue comparisons between New Vegas and and Four on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. then compare with the show. So my son, to get me ready, Mahler, sent me a shitload of uh, YouTube videos. On, on message, is all, okay, this should be your primer, Dad. And just... Oh, like, like, yeah. like lore? Like lore like like video. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, story videos and stuff. It's great. Well... This is the thing, uh, Fallout New Vegas fans. I wouldn't. I'm not surprised whatsoever that they fucking hate this show. Not just for anything to do with the games. Fallout New Vegas fans. It's like um, they select for people who clearly like details and you know efforts to stay in line with this, that, and the other thing. And then creative sort of like better. I, and by the way, no knock to the people who like Fallout Three and Four and uh, I guess Seventy Six. I'm actually I, I really loved Fallout Three when I played it. It's a lot of fun. But the way that they usually sectioned. Is like Fallout One and Two in New Vegas, a thoughtful post-apocalyptic stories that relate to like cause and effect and the development of the world and human nature and stuff. While the other section of the Fallout games are shooters that have silly stories, and you know Obsidian versus you know, um, and the way I see it is that uh, this show is much more playing into the uh, the goofy gaffster uh, side of Fallout, which would be fine if not for the fact that it's written like absolute dog shit, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, hey, you know, uh, I don't. I sometimes I hate to say it like that because I know there's people out there who are like I fucking loved it. You suck. <laughs> <I'll be> like, <laughs> okay, all right, it's fair. That's okay. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, we don't think you suck, but they can you say well, I love you're, it. You're just you. You you analyze things more intensely than most people do. Maybe I go too far some some places. Maybe, but I don't think it's going too far. Like, how did this no. old fucker with his dog? Not get hit by one of those fifty caliber. Bullets How did he get out of that, that place? Gatling gun? I don't know. But he just walked right out. He was a, he he was a dead guy, <laughs> and there was an alarm and everything, and he's just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm. Uh, Chris, get to feeling better and stay strong. Says Mad Dog three seven five for two dollars. Cheers, man. D Irishman nineteen ninety eight for four ninety nine. Gary, uh, what storytelling elements would you revive if you were in charge of Star Wars in the MCU? Uh, if it was 2024 and 2015, The Force Awakens after firing Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, so like Fantasy World. Um, I would go directly and to, into the EU. I would go directly in the EU. I, I would hire somebody who knows the EU intimately. Uh, but um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'd do. Uh, Brendan Lucas, for, but like that's that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. Brendan Lucas for 10 British pounds, 13 Spanish soldiers walk right into an Aztec capital to take the emperor hostage. Mahler, LOL, what garbage writing. Uh, who, how would that ever happen? Aztecs have thousands of soldiers. Why would, uh, what would Tywin do? That's what I asked. I asked, what would Tywin do? I tend to ask that in most shows. <laughs> what would do? Uh, the 13 Spanish soldiers took out, well, it wasn't 13, but um, they had uh, vastly superior technology. Vastly, vastly, vastly superior technology. I can't remember. That was in reference to yesterday. When, oh, when um, the Raiders came in and they didn't kill everybody. There, I, I, oh, I don't know if we want to get into it, but like my formatting for criticizing that whole sequence now is only slightly different with uh, extra information. Much worse, but still slightly different. And you'll find out your information in episode eight, so I'll, I'll wait for you to do that. Yeah. First. Um, yeah, because I don't know, like maybe the Raiders aren't like the bad guys. Or they're um, just kind of <laughs> bad guys, or whatever, or they're justified bad guys. Or they're I'm half justified. excited for you to find out. I don't <laughs> fucking know. All I know is they got a girl boss. Okay. Uh, Z and who for ten dollars? Good points, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Um, Gun Home Mac for five. It's and maybe it's in the game. I don't know. 
but the occasional female leader of a post-apocalyptic tribe gang group is believable. But we're starting to see it all the time now, when in most cases, if society has devolved into cannibalism, general piracy, chaos, and anarchy, it is the strongest and generally the most uh, sociopathic evil motherfucker who's in charge. But it's also got to be somebody who can fight off people challenging the threats yeah. all the time. What she would need is two dudes around her all the time that are completely loyal, probably sons or something like that. And maybe that she was a wife of a former leader. Okay. But well, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll discover some truths. Don't you worry. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. It, it's definitely possible once in a while, but to seeing it as, as frequently as we do is, is uh, it's a bit of a stretch, bit of a stretch. Gunho Mac for five dollars. Ryan also got a uh, stroke in Vegas, but it was from a body positive black girl. <laughs> Hi, Gunho Mac. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, Luis Suavez for twenty dollars. I really like Fallout Three, but New Vegas is an improvement uh, in the RPG mechanics as a sequel should be. Hell. Yeah. Horny Al for one ninety nine. As prefers his packages be included with boobs. This yes. is true. It's a fact. Washington for five dollars. Just got into Forbidden Frontier. When can I expect the next episode? Sunday. This Sunday. This 6 Sunday. We have a guest and we're gonna I got I gotta find time to watch a four and a half hour Graham Hancock debate. I got two hours in. Times one point eight. Yeah. But I gotta figure out what I'm gonna review because I'm definitely gonna review Rebel Moon. <laughs> and then it's like, do I do Fallout? Mm. Do I do fall out? I, I don't know. like I said, I really want to see those last three episodes. I, I have so much to ask you specifically. You, you caught my uh my message right. <laughs> I, oh, I caught your message. I caught oh? your message. I, I responded, I think. But um, yeah, I got to go to the gym, and then I'm coming right back to finish it. So <gasps> I will. It is a bit of like the, the to to give a bit of an excitement for tomorrow, right? The. the I, I like legitimately thought that I'd watched a different show where, where, where in terms of like <laughs> me, me and drinker are, are going to have polar opposite pers perspectives on this one. And I feel like our positions have been switched. Like we, it feels as though I should be on his side or he should be on mine, but you know, we'll see. It'll be fun. It'll fun be fun. fun. I, I, I can't I, wait. Mrs. Nerdrotic <laughs> loves the aesthetic and thinks the lead is cute. Um, that, she is cute though. I will agree with both of those things. Uh, and I do like, I think that, I think that's what a lot of people like is just the world. Um, but, uh, we'll get into I love it. how forward she is. Would you, you know, like to have sex now? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what's your sperm count? <laughs> oh, that, that line about my, my cock goes big and explodes. Like, oh a my God. Kid. Like a, oh, like a no. pustule, like a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, just yeah more fantastic right and i was uh I was like wow <laughs> i like the, the the monster with the fingers and it's like oh the the, the water monster yeah what was that it was called creepy. again i forgot I what it was remember. called but when you saw its fingers i was like ah it's kind of cool but mm -hmm. um you know it's weird i like weird i kind of wish he would have ate one of those guys but that's me uh, Retro Meister for nineteen ninety nine. Hail Gary! Uh, now that Keanu Reeves is now Shadow's voice in Sonic Three, I think Rogue the Bat. Uh, I think Rogue the Bat, if she re appears, should be voiced by Gina Carano, and Amy Rose should be voiced by iCarly's Miranda Cosgrove. You have given that some thought. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I got nothing against the Sonic movies. I mean, like they're not my thing. But I want them to succeed because the director, the people listened to the fans. So I hope they make gazillions of dollars because they listen to the fans and it seems to have made them happy. Uh, you fucked that beach for $1.99. Fallout takes place in the West Coast with NCR. Well, it's got uh, the donut shop that Tony Stark is uh, in and Iron Man 2. Uh, that's there. That's outside of, uh, like, right outside of LAX. I don't know, like, if that... 
that's how it worked. But um, yeah, they're in LA. Uh, Guy Vermecton for two dollars. Please pump up the volume, Gary, for the people. I'm trying, man. It just keeps changing, and it's like hard to keep monitoring. So here, I'll, I'll do. Uh, it's at 89 right now. Uh, and now it's at 61. Boom, 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 boom. Will it stay at 61? No, now it's at 55. 52. Check, 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 check. 48. It just, it does this after every update, and then it stops. It'll stop at some point. Windows 11 is fucking shit. So there I apologize. should be a checkbox to just Let, fix that. Oh, I'm sure there is somewhere buried in the fucking... It was like, oh, it's real easy. You just have to go to five, six places in your advanced settings. Like, fuck off. My volume shouldn't be bouncing around. No. Uh, and it probably has something to do with the soundboard and everything. But uh, Ghost of the Badlands is shipping out now. Good time to bring Razor Fist on Real BBC. Okay, okay. let's do it. Is it shipping? Yeah, get, call. Uh, what? I'll, I'll DM him today and ask him if he wants to come on. Do you want me to DM him for you? Sure. In your DMs? <laughs> okay. I mean, I could DM too. Uh, we'll be faster. Da, 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 da. Aaliyah Wells for 10000 Martian peso, pesos. Happy belated birthday, X-Ray Girl. Happy belated birthday, X-Ray Girl. The Bob that God made mad for four ninety nine. dollars People saying New Vegas was retcon seem to be wrong. There's 14 years between New Vegas and the show where the Shady Sands event and more could have occurred. Okay. Hey, Gary, I bought Doctor Who 50th anniversary movie uh, a few years on Amazon Prime, and it's been taken down. It has? Yeah, yeah. It, pro it probably is going to be slowly taken down and m migrated over to Disney, Disney Plus, I think. Dude, I went to o Mahler, Ocean's Eleven, one of my, the, the remake, one of my mm -hmm. favorite movies. They recently put it in 4K, and they popped it on HBO mm -hmm. for like a week and then took it down. Oh, but it's available on Blu-ray in like 10 days. But um, yeah, there's shit like going up and down all over the place. So I think as deals run out, um, most of the studios are just letting everybody have like you can find m movies now in multiple locations and it's just going to be licensing. They're just going to start licensing uh, like Star Trek is going to disappear from Paramount again, which is fucking funny. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Personally, I prefer the old women Ocean's Eleven. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I didn't even watch that. <laughs> Bethesda said Shady Sands destruction came right after New Vegas. No retcon, says Brett Lucas for five British pounds. Uh, NCR. What's NCR? The uh, new, new California, California Republic. Republic yeah. The new Cal. Okay, so that's what the Shady Sands was the new California Republic, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Gary, it's like I said, like the briefest and easiest way to explain it is like saying it's not a retcon that everything Luke Khan and Leia did fell apart. That's just added on continuity. It's like, yeah, I guess so. Okay. that th Wow. That makes it so much better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like... Luke's a quitter. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's canon. Okay. So it's not a retcon. Yeah, there's a fight over the exact dates and times as to whether or not it is in uh, what you could call a literal retcon, I guess. But as for the, you know, the post I was going to reference basically makes the argument that it's like, from a storytelling perspective, this is fucking lame. Like, and the fans are very upset about it, you know, like, so all the work that was done to create storylines in that area, and they've all just been nuked. Oh, I saw what you did there. Nuked. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you get to find out who would, did that new king and why by the way by the end of the uh, show it's a very satisfying answer I say with <laughs> oh you're, you're being sarcastic what it says it on my shirt you're a Brit you're always One, sarcastic aren't you and as, as you can see in chat someone said dates don't matter what they did is shit See what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, uh, whether it's a retcon or not, it's shit. I think that's the, the put in the simplest terms. It didn't ruin the lore as it was written. It ru ruined it later. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. yeah. Brendan Lucas. Like I don't understand. 
It's Does it be. represent something or anything that I'm just not aware of due to the lore? Does what represent what? Sorry, like shady, shady sands. sands. Yes. Like it's um, I think it was created in Fallout Two. It was one or two. I haven't. Uh, this is the, this is the problem for me. I think the show's really bad on its own, but I know that there are Fallout fans would be very remiss if I didn't mention how it's pooping all over their games. Um, they feel like they're the the unheard right now because of it, it's difficult to get familiar with source material when you're not familiar with the source material, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying my best to okay. let you guys, uh, to let everyone know how everyone's feeling about this. Oh, least... it represents old fallout. It's the capital of New California Republic. Okay. okay. Yeah. This, like I said, this 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 post about it, it goes through the history of how it was built, and it is kind of like you get sad reading it. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh sad. <laughs> Uh, Brendan Lucas for I, I'm loving it. I I'm actually loving this back and forth though. I think it's great. Uh, is this as great as the show? Find out tomorrow, and on <gasps> Friday night tights. Uh, Brendan Lucas. So yeah, though, tomorrow I have to go. I, 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 okay, your time changed, so you're going to be back to starting at three for me. I got a hard out because I'm going to see Ministry of uh, Ungentlemanly Warfare like right after Open Bar. Mm. Because there's no neat. there's no earlier show, so I got to see it at six here, six thirty. Yeah, it is neat. I'm gonna take the whole family. I'm kind of looking forward to that movie. I'm like, yeah, please be good, please be good, please, please be, be good. good. Yeah, agreed. Brendan Lucas for five British pounds. NCR, not good guys. Mahler spreading misinformation. Chris uh, Avalon, what? the writer of Fallout Two, and the I new was Vegas being sarcastic. DLCs. He was being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> the NCR is nuked. Yeah, he was being sarcastic. Uh, Buddy Rabbit for twenty dollars. If you find out what you missed, let me know, Mahler. I cannot find the justification to reset twenty-five years of development lore progression. <laughs> the detail and structure is asinine. Bos the Enclave. What's Bos? Brotherhood of Steel. But oh, okay. oh I should okay. know that. I should know that. Sorry, Enclave. Ghouls need uh, chems. It really is uh, Star Wars. Star right Wars. Part. Yeah. So. Well, you yeah, the uh, the idea like I can't see a reason for it. It's like yeah, we were we were right there with uh, with the Star Wars, and and the only thing everyone assumed is they just wanted to get back to what everyone quote unquote likes, which is oh look at us, we're going around the wasteland. Ooh, no, nobody's building up anything to become like a grand longer story that has more to say about the nature of humanity as time goes on in a post apocalyptic wasteland scenario. It's like nah, nuke it. Like okay, and uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of different things. <laughs> It just it's just wasted potential because like uh, that's that's what a lot of people are concluding. It's like why do that? What's the point when you can nuke anything? You could be anywhere. Why did you do that? And then there's the more nefarious assumption, which is that uh, Bethesda have fucking like a bitterness toward the fans who enjoy Fallout One, Two, and New Vegas. Answer me this real quick. We'll get to the last few here. Three bombs dropped on the L.A. area in the beginning. So are they atomic bombs or nuclear bombs? <clears throat> um, I'd Big have difference. to go into the wiki. Though I wanted to mention, because someone just said, um, you have to remember the Fallout series is based on the game. It is not the game. That is actually not true. This is the one time it's not true. In fact, of all the game adaptations, Mario, for example, that's its own continuity. Last of Us, that's its own continuity. Uh, mostly all of them, I would say, do this. They don't say we're canon with the thing, but uh, apparently the Fallout show is canon with the games. Mm -hmm. You're supposed <clears> to be able to consume them together. They 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 are the same canon. Yeah, not an, not an adaption. They are part of it. Um, the only thing that might be close is House of the Dragon is the actual true version of events right. from the book. Like they can coexist the books and the show because yes. it's unreliable narrators and stuff. But this is an instance in which that's why the fans are even more annoyed. Uh, Gary, you were talking about this before I even came on. People were saying like, if they had just said this was a different continuity, people would be like, fine, whatever, fuck you, fine. Yep. The reason they don't do that is because they know too many people will say fuck you. <laughs> so, but oh, yeah, I, it, it, it drags people in to be like, this is the same continuity. Like, ooh, okay. <laughs> and then yeah. Uh, the ghoul definitely nailed the Western bounty hunter vibes. I like the ghoul, but uh, that actor is fucking awesome. Uh, my dad, who grew up on John Wayne, loved his character. And some of the music choices, uh, dude, you throw Johnny Cash in something, I'm liking it. 
just <sighs> I the wish Johnny I could Cash. Say the same because I love Johnny Cash, but man, they was spamming that at some points. They did, especially in the second, like when they repeated a song. So you know, what they really spammed was uh, Maximus's one flashback. <laughs> you see that like eight times throughout the whole show, <laughs> where he gets out of the fridge and he sees a, a power armor. I was just like. <laughs> Why do you keep showing this over and over and over and over and over? We and get over it. Over we again? get it. <laughs> I was like, surely there's more that you could show me. Someone else, dude. How many times they show that? Uh, it's like four times, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You haven't seen all of them yet. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> once, <laughs> once is good. Maybe twice, but you elaborate on the scene a little more. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. All I thought about was Indiana Jones getting out of a fridge when I saw that. I no, thought it was um, a reference. The Brothers of Steel concept is fucking... I, I did, too. I did, too, to be honest with you. The concept of the Brothers of Steel, which I just learned from watching the show, is fucking rad. I love it, but... um, Yeah. There's loads of really cool shit in the Fallout universe, and I feel like the show is coasting on having done, like, facsimiles of a lot of that cool stuff. Like, photocopies. It's like, look, this is stuff that you like, isn't it? And then, and I think new watchers will be like, this is a really cool set of ideas. It's like, yeah, it all comes from this other thing. How, how familiar are you with that, Gary? <laughs> oh, it's what Gundam and a bunch of other people have talked about. It's like, this is the beginning of the end for gamers. <laughs> You're oh, about to get yeah. All your stuff I told him. He's, I was all, he's all like, I told you for a long time that they would abandon superhero movies for games. I'm all, dude, that is well underway. That is yeah. happening, bro. Uh, the superhero movies are getting abandoned. I mean, Captain America Four is a re is a reset because we can't say reboot, Mahler. It's a reset, uh -huh. um, <laughs> and it's a last minute one because they had to reshoot the entire film. And I will repeat again: it wasn't test screenings. It didn't make it past the internal screenings with the people who worked at Disney. That so I know for it. a fact. And okay. They were like Guys, this is cringe. <laughs> so if <laughs> Disney Marvel thought it was bad. <laughs> you know for a fucking fact, by the way, that they would have stopped the Marvels if they had done a similar process. But I guess like after the, you know, like the Bob Iger in. thing. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention the fact that they probably did have less um, actual oversight. They probably did leave Nia DaCosta to sort of make that. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, they're getting worried. <laughs> I wonder if they'll make like three different. Captain America 4s, <laughs> put them all out. <laughs> like, which one works? What would I... I know, right? Well, hey, Zack Snyder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have not heard, like... Rebel Moon, the director's cut, is a different movie with different takes. It's got different fucking dialogue in it. And got... then he also said, let me fix Sucker Punch. <laughs> I know! What? I saw that, I'm like, fuck no! I... <laughs> He's such a funny man. Not to trivial... Trivi trivialize uh ptsd but i have ptsd from that movie because i watched the <laughs> reset the story real quick i worked at technicolor i i worked on uh pre-mastering the blu-ray and dvd for that film so i watched the end because there was a tons of technical problems with the with the disc that we had to keep keep sending back to people i watched the end of that fucking movie 150 times over like a, four days I wanted to just go home at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was pretty imagine. I yeah. think that's pretty much what broke me. And I'm like, I don't want to work here anymore. Fuck this ain't fun. <laughs> um, carry a raccoon city for $5. Badass. You saw social D so much. Only seen them twice here in Florida. Next week, my band's playing with them. Bad religion and Mike Ness son's uh, band is love crime. Right on. Hell Yeah. Yeah, bad religion. I I like uh, social D more, and I like bad religion. <laughs> bad religion is a little commie for me, but uh, nine and to twenty three for five dollars. Uh, there was there was some like when I was like young and didn't really understand the lyrics. There was a lot of commie bands that I liked, but uh, just for the raw music. But uh, that's why the Ramones are the greatest punk rock band ever. Muller on the Nooner, not going to lie, watch the Fallout show with my brain off, but as soon as it turned back on, it was like whiplash with how much was wrong. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, Brendan Lucas mm -hmm. for five British pounds. Mahler, NCR are noble, good guys. Q, NCR, mowing down endless tribes and forcefully assimilating independent settlements into the Republic. So, again... 
I don't know if I have to explain this. Uh, in the way, part of the the point of Fallout as a whole concept is that oh, they do this in the show as well. Is that almost everybody has resorted to doing things that are like horrible in order to survive and stuff. My whole point, which I think is the fans' point, is there are stories that were being told in Shady Sands and the NCR. Like there's there's loads of plot lines. There's loads of interesting things to explore. There's developments way further than just nuked. Now there are ghouls and death claws, and you have to run around and collect medicine or whatever. There was a, there was a lot of potential, and I think not only from the fact that they nuked them back to square one, it's more of a why would you do that when you don't have to? What's uh, what's the big storytelling benefit of doing that? And the show has absolutely not justified it. It almost, to not spoil, was a very casual decision. It was like we'll just fucking nuke it. It's like hmm. Okay. Right. Oh. Sorry, Garrett. I can't. He's he wants the uh he wants to fix things. He wants to fix things, but I can't. I I'm because of uh, the screen it's on. Yeah, I just fix it later. Thanks like, for trying, Garrett. Thanks for trying. I mean, sorry it's going up and down. I'm trying to keep it up as much as possible. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use my right arm. I've got it holding my volume up right now. <laughs> Sorry. I, I realized everybody saw our private chat with our very boring conversation. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry, I was rambling about Fallout. You were. Uh, Buddy Rabbit uh, for 100. Reach over. <laughs> Hell! Uh, the narrative problem, even with the tagline of war never changing, is that we've set everything back again with no progression. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the idea of the NCR being nuked. I hate the fallout. I hate that fallout is a constant is in a constant state of regression and ruins aesthetic over meaningful plot. Yeah, it, it, uh, to, if anyone is confused, it's about reducing potential that's like the main fundamental thing the fans seem to have an issue with now as i said for me i take way more issue with just everything in the show in general um but with how it's been explained i understand why the fans are very upset it makes a lot of sense and they have far more cause as far as i'm concerned to be upset with this because it's directly canon with the games this is not something you can go hey guys it's the kelvin timeline so it doesn't fucking matter we are going to talk only about Fallout tomorrow, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> no, it, you, no, it's what the, it's what it's what the people want to talk about. No, I'm not. That's not even a complaint. It's just an observation. This is like it's like I'm going to have to watch all my son's lore videos, which I will do. I will do my prep. Man, I am down with doing homework. I love doing homework for stuff that I don't know about. I'm down with it. Let's go. Let's do this, Mahler. Mm. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Uh, Vaborn77 for four ninety nine. Gary, have you ever caught Stargate Universe series? It's two seasons. Was the best sci fi shows I've ever se seen in years. No, I have to watch the regular Stargate. I have a particular person named Matthew Hammond who has been uh, very <laughs> lightly nudging me that way for five years, four years. Um, and I will watch it. I I got through like half of the first season. I don't hate it. I, I like nineties procedural sci fi. That's my sh that's my fucking jam. I love I love it. And I, the show is vastly superior to a, the movie, which I don't like. I don't like the movie. I know that like a lot of people are like the movie's great. The movie sucks, and I love Kurt Russell, and I and like it's everything I like. It might have something to do with I'm not the biggest James Spader fan. It's just one of those actors is like uh, metaphorically has a face you want to just punch. I don't know. It's just I I've never been a big fan of him, but I didn't like the movie. And no, it wasn't totally because of Jay Davidson. Uh, Brandon Lucas, who I think is pretty duded up nowadays. Just want to point out. Uh, for five British pounds. No Fallout fans are saying this like The Last Jedi. You are. Uh, former Fallout writers have considered nuking the NCR. It's a valid story choice. Um, what's Tell me why. Tell me it, why. <laughs> Because in the same way, you could say the New Republic that Han, Luke, and Leia set up fell apart. That's a valid story choice. It's like, 
okay, tell me why. <laughs> this is the thing. And by the way, say like you can't compare it to Last Jedi. I was like, I can in this aspect. It's pretty easy, actually. It's a record of a particular state of being in the universe that a lot of fans were a fan of and wanted to see where it would go next. Can I, can I tell you again how much I fucking love this? I love this. This is a normal nerd conversation. You guys yes, go at each other, but it's normal. It's not like that chick has a dick and she didn't have a dick in the book. You know, like that, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> those conversations <laughs> those conversations i'm not down with this i'm fine can we have more of these please adam us for 9.99 i suspect bethesda and amazon wants to downplay the ncr to avoid counterbalancing them with caesar's legion aka toxic masculinity that's where oh before you say anything that's where the why comes from that's where the, uh, what are they changing lore for? Is it to avoid toxic masculinity? Is to make all the men effeminate? Um, which there's a little bit of in this show, let's just say. But I don't know what it's like in the vault, in the game. Don't know. All I'm rooting for, Mahler, is, is there needs to be an episode of Vault 108. All right. With the Garys. Mm-hmm. Let's say Gary all the time. I feel like you're a bit biased to that, but that's okay. I'm a little bit, but I can finally see myself in a uh, post-apocalyptic clone that's a murderer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Nicholas Webb uh, for one dollar. Would you? I uh, would love for you to do a reaction on FNT with this song, uh, "Hail to the Fellowship." What song? Oh, tell me why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, nine and a twenty-three for five dollars. Shady Sands is a town that you find in Fallout 1 and contribute to its survival and to know that it got nuked for insert reason is infuriating. Oh, so it's something you help save and it's part of a mission. Ah, ah. See, the light goes them. on. Okay. You, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, like you, it feels like your mission was meaningless. So to back up Mahler a little bit, it felt like watching the original trilogy was meaningless when you saw The Last Jedi. I'm just trying to understand. I'm not saying I know. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> to be fair, I will acknowledge there is a huge angry debate happening between Fallout fans about this right now. Uh, that's awesome. We know mm -hmm. you're out there. I understand. And it's okay. It's We're trying right. to learn more. You are valid. You are valid. Dude, <laughs> fight away. Fight over this stuff all fucking day long. And I'll just get my popcorn out and I'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I'll enjoy it. It's like, you know, when, when, when Jeremy and I fight about the binging, I think that's a Good debate. <laughs> the the binge. Yeah, I, think so. I think it's fun. It's fun to argue about that shit and not like some conflict in the Middle East or whatever. But you should be more aware of the world. Why? I am, by the way, but why? Why talk about it? What am I gonna change? I don't I can't even say Kiev. Kiev. Chicken Kiev. Someone said he's more of backpedaling. I am trying. No, he's trying to be understanding. People. I don't want you to feel like we're just like bulldozing over the whole yeah. thing. People have that it's fine. I understand, and it's okay that you like it. I'm just saying. It's smaller backpedaling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to tell you, as somebody who knows Mahler pretty well, I know you pretty well. I think so. You don't fucking backpedal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, just not fucking backpedal. I feel like you think your thoughts so thoroughly yeah. before you even say them. <laughs> I'm funny. not even kidding. I have so many notes. Like, how many pages? I believe you. <laughs> so many notes. I'm planning on, I need to like redraft the notes because there's too many. <laughs> You're making a video, aren't you? I'm, I'm, fucking, I'm already in the middle of making three different videos. There's no way I can make a fucking Fallout video. As That's well. what I was saying too, but man. We need to clone both of you. Uh, <sighs> no. Well, they did in, in Fallout. It didn't work out. Oh, that's true. <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> uh, Makazole for five British pounds, one piece. Black Sails. <laughs> Black Sails is good. I didn't like it at first, and then it's good. Uh, 1923. Very good. Very good. Uh, we're getting a season two of that. Uh, Wheel of Time, Raised by Wolves, lots of Amazon Netflix movies, all filmed in South Africa, Cape Town. Dread uh, filmed in Unjoburg. Yeah, so 
right now there is a new uh, tax credit in South Africa, so you're going to see a lot of filming going on there. Going on there. Uh, 1923 was filmed. Yeah, I like 1923. I know some people don't like uh, Kayla Sheridan's Western stuff, but 1923 was pretty fucking good. And that was uh, some of your early years. It must have been an interesting time. Yeah. Uh, or for America, I know. Like It was like when shit was really old. Uh, British citizen. I walked down a road <laughs> that was a thousand years old, dude, in your country. And I'm like, damn. Neat. It's neat. Was I there? A thousand years old. It was like yeah, almost a thousand, give or take a couple hundred years, but no, it was really fucking old. I stayed in a castle that was built in, in Sicily that was built in. The original foundation has been rebuilt, but it's like year 800. It was fucking ancient. It was ancient. It was a fucking old castle. Uh, but they re re they renovated it a bunch. But I did pick up a book. They had all this shit laying out. Like all this, like that should be in a museum. So when you rent the castle, I didn't rent it. Um, Like you could just pick it up. So a lot of the stuff was from the... 16, 17, 1800s, like within that 200 year period. So I pick up this fucking Bible, right? And the guy who's with me just looks at me and goes, Yeah, that thing's like, uh, that thing's like 400 years old, dude. And I'm like, Oh, should I put it down? He's like, No, read it. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Okay." laughs> You're there with like tongs, like opening the page. Like, I, I just picked it up like a fucking ugly American. And I, all right, I did knock over some chinaware with my fucking backpack. Uh, God, I was pissed. I was like, oh, oh man, can we run and get some glue? <laughs> I, was like, I thought about it too. It would be funny. It would be funny. They probably wouldn't have noticed. I'm pretty good at that shit. You know what I mean? These toys I fucking broke and put back together with glue. Uh, Nicholas Webb for a dollar. Uh, well, I've read that. I read that one for the Emperor. Four ninety nine Mahler. I just finished. Uh, in defense of Dark Souls 2 and loved your series on it. Oh, I'm glad you did. Uh, Fallout series is nothing but jangling keys for normies, waste, wasted potential, and spiteful attempt to shit out West Coast Fallout and remake the Bethesda Slops image. Says Kyle Krall for $5. Is... Little bit. Oh, so, okay. So they already did something on the West Coast. Is that what he's saying? And it sucked, so they're kind of doing a well, redo, or there's just fundamentally there is a design approach that draws a huge line between uh, two sides of the Fallout fandom, being how you enjoy what kind of content you get from this world, and that's Fallout One, Two, New Vegas versus Three, Four, Seventy Six. That's it, right? <laughs> trying, to, trying to remember all the games. And yeah, there's, uh, as I said earlier, I enjoy both, but they had to pick one, I guess, for the show. And they've gone with one that's uh, far more goof-tastic to the point where people are saying that Patrick Willem's line of why are you taking this so seriously when it's Space Wizards for Children or whatever. And it's like the show itself takes a lot of shit very seriously. Um, I can't remember if you've gotten up to it yet, but there are several moments yeah you would have seen it by now gary the mm -hmm. um you know the supermarket where she kills that one ghoul yeah like the the way they portray that do you think that's just memes and funnies or do you think that's very serious the way they play the music the slow-mo how sad she is that she had to end the ghoul's life you know oh how did i take it well my point is that the the show itself is trying to have drama not just silly nonsense where they're trying to be earnest around. at times yeah yes they are and i think that i think it I think it would have been better if they gone a little more earnest. They, 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 it flips back and forth though, right? Because th mm. there's definitely flashback stuff I, uh, I dig. But, um, yeah, that's one of the scenes I had a problem with. <laughs> okay. When she was in the supermarket. Uh, there's, there's so much. <laughs> there's so much. I, so I made much. it. I shot you back on that one. I'm like, that's the moment she mm, mm. kind of becomes a girl boss. I mean, she 
she's about to be torn into organs, but luckily she's able to kick a robot so that it opens up her restraints and then she defibrillates it and controls it herself. Yep. That scene was fucking terrible. Yeah, I was like... You, you held off for a while, but <laughs> here you go. Uh, yeah. Uh... But I did like the ghoul getting all his drugs. <laughs> I really liked Matt Barry being the voice of the robots. Matt Barry's funny as fuck. I knew I recognized that voice. Oh, it was Matt Barry. Okay. I knew I recognized that voice. I was like, I know this voice from somewhere. Not yeah, everyone knows very famous for his role playing a droid in Book of Boba Fett. That's where everyone knows him from. Is that where everybody knows him from? That's yeah. everyone's favorite role from Matt Barry. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Buddy Rabbit for fifty dollars. Shady Sands go from a hovel to capital of post-apocalyptic democracy with printed paper money and player agency contributing to the narrative for three games. The only reason it's set in Cali was for Easter eggs and to uh, dash it aside. It's bad. James Moore for five dollars. In my opinion, OG Fallout uh, New Vegas are about post uh, post post apocalyptics apocalypse. Uh, about the building up of civilization. Bethesda just wants it to be post-apocalypse, so not mm -hmm. post-post-apocalypse. Yeah, if you think about it, as what Bethesda want is a series of like dungeons to explore and a bunch of horrible monsters that are crawling behind every corner and a bunch of dead societies you get to sort of scrape through. While before that, it was a sense of like, what does humanity do to build back up after an apocalypse? And they explored a bunch of things. Yeah, you know, I hate to dichotomize it this way, but a lot of people do. It's like the one half is like the thinking man's fallout. The other half is the clown fallout that we just get to mess around in. Uh, bulk squat thrust for $5. I refuse to go with the show being canon. If the fallout TV show is canon, then so is Indiana Jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull. Hashtag nerd fight. <laughs> nerd fight. Uh, the last few minutes of crystal skull can be canon. Yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah. I'm fine with the last few minutes. Uh, Gunter Odeem for $5. I think part of the reason they nuked the NCR and Fallout was because they would have to make more stages and had more extras to fill the world. You could just not go there. <laughs> you, could, you could just not go there. Go the places what if was, you want to. What was the budget on this series? It, uh, not small, right? Uh all out TV series budget um, estimate 153 mil for the season. 53 million. So not like stupid like the Rings of Power, mm. uh, but 10 to 15 million per. Ep no, that's pretty stupid. 10 <laughs> to 15 million per episode is fucking stupid. Is fucking a lot stupid. Lot of money for for a streaming show that's going to bring you in no money, like none. Uh, it, 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 well, it brings some subs for a little, maybe, but it's Amazon Prime. It's negligible. Um, and they're not making any uh, any money off their ads that they're forcing you on. Maybe it makes up for that $2. Uh, you know, maybe we're making up for it with the two extra dollars everybody's paying for no ads. But, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fucking money, dude. That is one Godzilla minus one for an episode. Wow. Well. Godzilla minus one made Hollywood look just fucking stupid. And I, I, I love it. Uh, the woman you save in Fallout 1 is Shady Sands. In Shady Sands, later on, founded the first version of the NCR because of the kindness the player showed to her. Says Ross Pendragon. I think if I'm correct... Yeah, because it's in the uh, it's in the thread. So the NCR of New California Republic was created as a direct result of the actions of the character in Fallout One, as they inspire the daughter of the leader of Shady Sands, Tendi, to inspire her father Aradash to reach out to nearby settlements to organize and work together. Saw the results of this in Fallout Two. Tendi is now an old woman and the NCR's second president. See how like that's really cool and fun. Yeah, but like and and you know it, it's not any particular character, any particular plot line or particular building. It's just that there's like an area of potential and it was like, that ain't there anymore. You're like, oh, 
Why? And that's the thing, if there's some grand storytelling effort that related to it, because it's not impossible. I want to I be clear here. You know, like in Star Wars, when it says, like, the new Republic that Han and Leia build is going to fall apart. I'd be like, okay, there are ways you can make that work that are interesting. Obviously, we didn't get that. Um, and in the same vein, it's like, why did they do this in Fallout? And like I said, you'll find out in Episode 8. And I was, <laughs> it was quite funny. I was like, no way. That's it? Okay, fine. <laughs> they blew it up for that reason. Okay. I really, oh, just the best Star Wars idea I've heard is the New Republic and remnants of the Empire have to band together to fight an outside force. That's ultimately, because you yeah. either have to have the Empire come back and then the Republic fall apart uh, or not tell the story afterwards, which I probably would have stuck with. But um, that probably would have been much better from another galaxy. Have some fun. You know, kind of like Reavers. Make something like Reavers. Oh, I fucking... There's a reveal that's similar to that Serenity reveal about the, the Reavers. It's so much worse. Uh, but that's okay. I, I was going to say, someone said uh, he's reading the wiki and pretending he's some kind of Fallout guru. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I am literally doing oh. it so that if if Gary, the game of God, had the context, <laughs> I'd let him do it. If X-Ray Girl was big into Fallout and she had all the context, I'd let, let her do it. It's it's. I'm just doing it so that the people who are setting in Super Chats talking about this subject we have more context to be able to bounce back with them. Yeah. I just, want, I just want that to be able to be the case. That's all. I don't know shit about Fallout. I've admitted this several times. Listen, I know everything about it. I'm just playing along, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, what I know the most about Fallout now is the ins and outs of the fucking TV show. That's like my... That's where my knowledge comes I, in. I'm learning a lot about fucking the new California Republic and Shady Sands. <laughs> so that's cool. I'm, I'm down. Uh, Nick asked for $10. Bethesda's Fallout 76 is based on rebuilding civilization. But the end of the game is all about launching more nukes at the map to get crafting materials. That's the level of thought they put into things. James Moore for $5. Clearly the answer is Mahler has to play every Fallout game on stream. No. I, I should <laughs> play at least one. I'm enjoying New Vegas I've so already. Far. I'm supposed to be playing the other two Arkham games. I got Spellblades on the way. Then there's that. Aww. There's yes. uh, No Rest for the Wicked is out in like tomorrow. Okay. Don't worry about it. Stellar Blade. I'll be there too. Dude, why is everything coming out in the next week and then there isn't going to be fucking shit for a month? I know. <laughs> why couldn't they spread it out? What the boxes? fuck? They did this in like, yeah, they, uh, like it. this is going to be a year of that. Like, you know. Acolyte and House of the Dragon come out same month. There's going to be nothing for like two months after that. Yeah. Unless Rings of Power. Come on, editors. Hurry up. <laughs> We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Golden Nuggets for 10 British pounds. Damn, get well soon, Chris. I'm still using a colostomy Aww. bag from cancer removal. Oh, shit. Hospi uh, hospitals suck. Matt Berry yeah. was in Garth. Moringa's Dark Place, highly recommend for Gary and Mahler. Um, Ross yeah. Pendragon for $2. Uh, he did. You did read it. Oh, I did read it. Yeah. He he sent it when you hadn't read it yet, so oh. I double-checked. Yeah. We did. We did. So it's RIP. RIP you didn't re read my first Super Chat, but I did. Uh, Buddy Rabbit um, for $20. Oh, go on. I was just going to say, Garth Marenghi's Bad Place, uh, Dark Place, uh, Toast of London, um, What We Do in the Shadows. These are all like the more classic. Obviously, the IT crowd was my kind of favorite Matt Berry thing. Um, really fucking funny, awesome actor. Genuinely fun seeing him in the Fallout show and essentially playing himself, or at least the character he often plays. The, hello, that's who I am. And yeah. I voice the droids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun shit. Buddy Rabbit for 20. The easy question to ask is why is this not anywhere else in the US but has to be in California? Uh, because I you know, some of us might enjoy California being completely nuked. I don't know. <laughs> uh it's uh member berries to hollow out a world player agency helped construct uh construct. A longtime fan. I felt chipped. Uh Brendan Lucas for five British pounds. Yes, characters can have internal arcs in science fiction shows. You act like Bethesda ruined the franchise when the uh, previous owner destroyed it. That's, you know what, Fallout fans, you're welcome to have a big old debate on that one. I don't know anything about it. Uh... That's kind of what my son said. 
That's all I know. Uh, Bastard, yeah, no, Bastard Luigi for four ninety nine could be uh, misremembering it, but the NCR is the reason caps are used as currency. They started using caps and back them with their water reserves. I like the wow. That's more thought than Civil War gave. That's <laughs> um, is it? How long do you think it will take to get to the DEI ESG out of everything? It seems like it's inevitable. It says Ice in Jafreek for ten dollars. Well, it's never going to completely leave because those rules are now there in the unions. Like it's basically agreed upon. Uh, it, it'll years to cycle out to cycle out and get back to um get back to meritocracy uh without discrimination meritocracy without discrimination which is kind of what they were doing anyway it's not like hollywood was filled with a bunch of fucking nazis uh like uh, like so many people think there's a nazi around every fucking corner uh there isn't uh and uh, cultural bias and stuff like that uh talent for the most part, it's talent. Samuel Ayrton, this is the last one for $9.99. Hollywood Voltec. Okay, our messaging is too forward and blatant. The subjects are re uh, rejecting it. Let's return to subliminal messaging and more subtle approaches in this experiment. Yes. They that's that's a lot a lot of it will just go underground. Back underground. They got arrogant. They started talking about it. They got caught. All right, we got to get out of here. This went way longer, but it was fun. I'm going to stop these super chats. You guys are too kind because they keep coming in. Oh, fallouts making them. All right. Oh, there... oh God. Is there more? <laughs> you just look full more. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> okay, here we go. Do you want me to read them quickly? Read them. Okay, Zach Winters for $9.99. Even the show was 100% faithful towards the lore. The adaptation of the show was utter buttholes in the writing and plot. A stronger argument, in my opinion. AJ Film Guy for five says, Mahler, you're a storytelling genius. Any chance you might do a workshop of sort and help some of us growing storytellers out? I'd sign up. Um, first of all, agree with the first super chat that even if there was no fallout before the show, this would I, I, still I thought you were going to say bad. I am a storytelling genius. <laughs> no, I didn't. Mean <laughs> so I was going to say, secondly, that was incredibly kind of you. I am not a fucking storytelling <laughs> genius in any way, shape or form. I am just a fan who pays a lot of attention because I like it when things line up. Uh, <laughs> As for like a workshop, the the most I would say I we even come close to offering anything like that. It's just the episodes of EFAT where we talk about writing. Like we did a themes one recently, where we go over almost everything we believe need, needs to happen when it, when it comes to writing themes. Uh, we open, you know, we try to explore the idea of you don't have to write them at all, you don't have to intend to write them, and they can erupt. You can start with them, you can end with them, you know that sort of thing. And we try over over the years to cover a lot of broad subjects. Um, so that that would be the closest we sort of get to that, but. Yes, my my argument is not going to be the show. The show is bad because how badly it treats Fallout as an IP. I'm more than happy for that to be acknowledged. I'm just I'm more focused on how bad it is as a story in and of itself. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool beans. Uh, Ross Pendragon for five says, "Sorry, here's another five USD one to make up for it." Also, Fallout One has one of the best villains in gaming. The second is Arcanum. Also, the BOS got changed in Fallout Three. Oh, Brotherhood of Steel. Oh, in a good way? I don't know. Um, but yeah, again, that's just stuff I don't know about. Yeah. And uh, Sandy Q has gifted five nerd erotic memberships. Thank you so much, Sandy Q. You got that sick voice that the people like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got to pump up my volume again. Jesus. <laughs> God, this thing is annoying. Uh, all right. We got any more? Uh, no. We're good. Okay. Thanks, everyone. This is a super long nooner. That was supposed to be super short, <laughs> right, but it's it was... going to be a short one, right? Okay. I'm just going to stop saying that for the rest of my life. Uh, it was tons of fun, though. So thanks for hanging out with us today, despite Thank all you, the Molly. No problem. Thanks for having me. The... Oh, dude. Thanks for coming on. You rule. Um, yeah, we lost our power. I, I there was just briefly lost my power due to something. And... Uh, yeah, can't wait for it to really start raining here. So uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be on Friday Night Tights. Uh, I'll be on Open Bar with the Critical Drinker and Mahler tomorrow. What Yay. else are you doing, Mahler? And what am I doing? Saturday Rebel Moon. Be <laughs> yes. Yay. It's the, the important one. And maybe something for Fallout. Like a, I'm half oh, expecting no. me to just stream a video game and talk about all my issues with it. 
uh, at least notes have got to go somewhere, you know. Because I don't want to take up all of Open Bar's time just listing all of my issues with the Fallout show. Maybe you should do an EFAP on Fallout. Well, we're stacked up this week, so I might. And the mm. thing is, Fringy and Rags haven't seen it, so it would just be um. me ranting at them while they go, uh huh, mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. So we're uh -huh, doing, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. yeah, so it's Open Bar, FNT, and then I'm on <clears throat> EFAP. EFAP. I'm going to lose Happy my easy week. <laughs> Somewhere no, in between there, Moon. I'm going to record a video on Rebel Moon. And then. The uh, Scar Giver. The Scar Giver. Boy, that's going to. Yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, and then next week, I'm on with Lauren Chen. I don't know if that's recorded. Or oh, not, though. and Razor Fist is coming on next week on Tuesday. Hell yeah. <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Hail Razor Fist. Can't wait to get the book. Sweet. Uh, what do you got coming up, X Ray Girl? Oh, I'm going to do my birthday stream after this at some point once I get changed. I'm sorry. I don't want to wear uh, this dick shark shirt <laughs> <laughs> for tonight. Sorry, Chris. Love you. <laughs> That's it. All right. Oh, do you guys want to mention what's coming on Friday? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, it's somewhere. I didn't have it that handy. The release of the BBC plushies. Yes. So this oh, you is, know what? This is Gary of Rivia. And uh, we got Peeping As. Peeping uh, As. Cthulhu Mahler and X Ray Girl. Removable plushies. sword. Yeah. Uh, oh. I and don't even know if this has been shown on, on a stream yet, but that's yours. Is, no. Of, uh, Show it. Mike Show we it. Can, Could you get that link? Just, X Ray Girl. Yeah, I linked you. Oh, did you. Thank you. This is what. Cthulhu mole is gonna look like. I'm so excited. I love the little uh little gooba squid. <laughs> that, I didn't know what to call it, thank you. <laughs> He's my little friend. <laughs> uh, yeah. Your little octopus. <laughs> is that your yeah, child? Uh, Am I could be your child? One of your no, many children. Your, your favorite child. Mind. The uh this went through so many phases, but I was like when they showed me this one, I was like, that's it. You got it. <laughs> that's 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 wonderful. I love it. So, uh, yeah, the team will be going up on Friday, as far as I'm aware. Right on. Yes, and as uh, he tweeted his, so you can go. Oh, dude. You, you can, can see what there. his looks like. All right. Everybody, sorry about the volume issues today. I apologize. Uh, Garrett's going to have a lot of fun fixing that for the upload on, <laughs> 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 on Nerdrotic Live. And this will also be available on Spotify, Apple Music, and all that other stuff. Thanks again for Mahler for coming on. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.